All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of A-Town Talk. This is episode 14. Uh, it's our first remote episode. We're no longer in, we're no longer in Kansas, man. <laughs> you know, no. Uh, today I'm joined by my co-host, as always, El Bubi, Raul Jimenez. What's up, what's up? And then our guest today is my man, Jay. Jo- Joey is your actual name, right? Well, Jose is my real name, Jose? but no one, has, no one needs to know that. All right. You, yeah. go, you go by Coach Jay? I go by Coach Jay now. Coach yeah. Jay. Yeah. All right. So this is our first guest that uh, actually booby pulls. So good job, booby. You finally start oh, carrying shit. your weight around here. <laughs> oh, shit. That was, I hadn't contributed to shit. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> done nothing out here. Has it been showing up? Yeah, he just shows up. Yeah. No, um, that's good. But yeah, um, Coach Jay, he is, man, you, you are literally the Coach Jay. You have... How many soccer teams over here in El Paso? Dude, I think I'm sitting now, we're sitting at about 14 total squads mm-hmm. um, with this new um, movement that we're doing and this new uh, new brand that we're building up. I think that puts us at about 20 squads now. 20 squads. Yeah. And what, what league is it? Uh, so we run uh, Paso Premier League mm-hmm. is the main, the main league that we're in. However, we do tend to dabble in some of the uh, more local ones. Um, they're not sanctioned or anything, but mm-hmm. you know, just a different environment. So we're everywhere, man. All right. In in age groups, what do they range? So I run. Uh, usually, we have twenty third, twenty nine kids born in twenty nineteen. So that's uh, four turning five this year, all the way up to twelve year olds. And then uh, just recently, we acquired a uh, two thousand eleven squad, which is now thir- uh, thirteen years old. So anywhere from yeah, between those age groups. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and what what got you into to coaching? You play soccer when you were younger? Hell no. <laughs> no? <laughs> I hated this sport, dude. Yeah, just Yeah, man. No, you know what it was? My um my son, man. You know, actually I was deployed one day. Mm-hmm. I was deployed and my wife hit me up and she's like, Hey, you know, Romeo's gonna join soccer at that time. I said, Bro, you are crazy. Yeah. I even if you look back on my on my IG and everything, dude, you can I used to I started hashtag, it was like twenty what was it like 2028 20, Heisman or something? Because you know, I wanted my son to play football, yeah, because that's what I played. And uh, but no, you know, he she's like, I'm gonna have him join soccer so he can do something. And I was like, Well, I mean, I guess you know, I was deployed, I can't really do much about it. But when I, you know, when I came in, I was like, This is a joke, this is stupid. <laughs> I hated life, <laughs> it was bad, but it was they were babies, man. And uh, yeah, eventually, you know, I started off as just like in a as a dad. And then the, the head coach at the time, he ended up, he's like, you know what, guys, I'm leaving. Like, he, he took a job in Arizona. Um, shout out Abraham. And he um, shout was out. like, yo, I'm leaving, uh, going to Arizona, whatever. And I was like, all right. At that time, um, it was, you know, the team was very, uh, I give them a lot of shit for it, but they were all babies, man. Mm-hmm. You know, they were little kids and they they didn't know left. They didn't know their thumbs from their index fingers. You know what I mean? It was that mm-hmm. bad. It was, just, it was bad. And, um, you know, and then when he left, his assistant coach took it over, and then he's like, yo, would you like to come on, help out? I said, sure, you know. I mean, but it's totally different than what you guys have been doing. Yeah. You know, because, again, he was in that, now I know, right? Now I know, five years later, I understand what he was doing. But at that time, I said, there's no reason these kids are out here playing Duck, Duck, Goose, my guy. You know what I mean? We're playing soccer. So it was like one of those things that, so when it happened, you know, we had very contradicting styles me and the guy who took it over mm-hmm. and then I guess uh he didn't want to move his schedule around to accommodate for the practices and all that so he ended up stepping down and I ended up taking over the team at the time I ended up taking over like seven kids within like a week two weeks I was down to like three Damn. so I had to um, go stand in front of a pre-k class and recruit <laughs> yeah and that's how it kind of blew up from there so. I'm sure that wasn't creepy right <laughs> it's nah, like hey was- kids you want to play soccer <laughs> jump into my van so you you can I guess you went down from you say you went down from seven players to three, mm-hmm. that, and that's because I would say it's because of your coaching style, right? Yeah, yeah. It was they were so used to you know oh great job good try you know stuff like that and I'm not that you know I was very like dude what are you doing like I would you know I'm yelling I'm mm-hmm. you know if you look back at old footage of me coaching man you would be terrified you know but I think it helped them in the long run. It yeah. helped me in the long run. Like, I was growing as they were growing. So, yeah, but no, like he said, I, within a week, two weeks, I was down to, like, three. And I was like, listen, you know, if we're going to do this, I'm like, I got to bring in parents. You know, I had to bring in parents. Yeah. It wasn't the kids necessarily. It was the parents. I needed parents that were going to be able to 
trust that like old school parents you know what i mean like the dad played ball like yeah. no dude like my my coach you know the, the type that have stories that are like nah bro my coach used to grab me and yeah. you know those i needed those type of parents that knew like no it's gonna be hard you know this isn't easy if you really want to get good at something it's not gonna be easy so luckily i was blessed still blessed now to have a great group of parents yeah and I, I know i know my wife when so my son plays right for the 2018 and when we first brought him on and my wife saw you coaching and she was like, look at the way he yells at him. And I'm like, and I'm trying to explain to her because I, you know, I grew up playing sports too. And I was like, that's fine, dude. Like that's, that's what's going to get these kids going. You can't be that coach who's going to be like coddling them. Like, hey, no, you're fine. We'll pick it. Like, no, you got to get on their ass sometimes because that's, that's the way you learn sometimes, man. And, and, and sometimes you do need that. But yeah, and I remember when my wife first came on. <laughs> And I was just kind of like, he's, he's fine, like, relax. <laughs> he's going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, like, he's good. And no. and you can see it. You can see the, the right, in, throughout all the teams, you can see that, you know, what they're doing. If, you know, you put, I think you put out a message the other day on one of the, we use that Sports U app, mm -hmm. and you lined up all the teams starting from 2019 all the way to, what, 20, 2012. 2012. And he's like, he, he's, he's basically like, he put out the message where it was like, what place they're in. And it was like first, second, yeah. you know, first, second. They're all like competing for first. Like they're 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 all up there. Yeah. So I mean, I take great pride in that. You know, I'm 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 always the first to to pat ourselves. You know, pat the club, all my coaches, all my staff, on the back. And in, in terms of, dude, nobody's doing what we're doing. No one can sit there and tell you like, oh, I have awesome squats from this age to this age. Nobody can do that. You know, you know, there are teams out there that are like, oh, my squad. And this age group is amazing. Okay, great. What about the other ones? What about the rest of them? You know what I mean? Nobody can say that we're, that they're accomplishing what we're accomplishing as a club. You know, and now, that, again, now moving forward with what I'm, what I'm moving forward with now, it's like we dominate every age group. Every age group we're competing. We're competing in a whole other level that, that is unheard of, you know, because for the longest, the teams that would compete the way we are, they were filled with a bunch of guest players and just a bunch of select teams and, you know, but no one's doing what we're doing where it's just like, dude, every single one of those teams that are in the top of their division, every single one of those players was at practice today. Means on. There was no like, oh, we're the only winning because they brought so-and-so in for this playoffs. No, it's like, dude, this is those same kids that you see on the weekends out there. They're out here practicing with me every single week. And no one can say that. And they're they're a good group of kids. We we were we joined one of the practices and and I I, I jumped in there uh, to do some some penalty kicks, and I was a goalie. And there were nine ten year old. No nah, man, you're eight and nine years old. Eight and nine year old. I'm trying to give myself some credit here. Eight and nine year old uh, girls. Girls. And shit, they kick hard, man. <laughs> I I thought you know the first the first one. I'm like they're gonna go soft and. I hit the first one and I felt it right away. And I was like, you guys don't got some like extra gloves or some shit? <laughs> <laughs> Something I'll be put on? Nah, yeah. those girls, nah, those girls are special though. They're yeah, good. those girls are the, they're the cream of the crop, man. Yeah. They're, they're amazing. Oh man, I didn't even stretch, dude. <laughs> let me, let me stretch. Oh. Oh man. Booby, I didn't sign up for this, dog. Oh. oh man. Did you get it? <laughs> Dude, what? Hey, y'all take all, it easy on me. I'm 30. These are all seven and nine year olds, my guy. <laughs> oh man. Yo, if they score on you, they're not going to shut up. All right. Oh, man. For the record, I was goalie for like two games because we had no goalie. So I don't even play goalie. There's <laughs> right. go. a ball here. There's a ball here. Who needs one? Yeah. You just got to score on him. Oh. All right. No. Yeah, but get some space. My, my knees are space, Leah. already. Hold on, we'll do the right, we'll do the right, this is for a pen. Hey, we need 
<laughs> I don't got that kind of money. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Better score oh. on him. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's one. All right, that was my first you one. Warming yeah, up, warming, warming up. up. He said he was warming up. <laughs> right here. Let's go. Let's go. Oh <laughs> Good job. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. oh. Good. What's up? <laughs> You see, there's a line here, girl. I was just warming up. It's over now. Oh, he said he's warmed up now, Ari. Oh, no. Wait, is yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cat like reflexes, dog. Oh. <laughs> 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 I slipped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that's a good spot. <laughs> oh, where am I going? Where am I going? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Right here, right down the middle. Uh. Oh! Fuck. Oh! Oh, that's bad. Sheesh. Was that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? It was nine of them. Six of them scored. Damn. Come on, Come on now. Run it back. Hey, Booby, you're next. <laughs> you're next, dude. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> yeah, right. Fuck. Oh. oh. Right at him. They said it's because you're off your line, they said. Whew. Dude, low key, that hurt. <laughs> She's got a cannon. Oh, <laughs> you reached at it there. <laughs> how's on? How's on me? How's on me? <laughs> Blast it! Blast it! <laughs> now we know. Let's go! Let's go! Oh! Right here, right in his face, see how fast he is, right? <laughs> Go. <laughs> <laughs> Try to knock his glasses off. <laughs> ah, this one's loud. <laughs> By hitting him? Yo, I'm low-key winded. Cannon, cannon. It's a cannon. Oh. 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 <laughs> Dude, they're gonna shoot all day if you don't tell them to stop. I'm already tired. <laughs> you got two more, coach. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a microphone. All right, last one. Get it, Emma. Oh! <laughs> All right, get a lap, girls. Go, go, go. Good job, girls. Yeah, those girls. I'm, again, I go back to it, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It's easy to, for me to brag about myself, but mm -hmm. nah, man. It's those, the, the athletes that I'm blessed to coach. Amazing, dude. That's awesome. And I, I grew up playing soccer. Well, I kind of started playing a little later, like around 13. Um, I played in the, one of the Christian leagues here in El Paso. 
And man, it took us a while to to get a, a decent team. But man, these, these girls, they have the touch, and I, you can tell right away. Yeah. When I was taking footage, I was like, oh shit, like they got it, they yeah. got it. And those are eight year olds, man. Yeah. You should see my. I got a whole other group of girls that, you know, they're what, three years older, two, three years older, and their their touches are amazing too. So it's like, yeah. So since you didn't play soccer, like, how did you, like, you just started watching soccer and started playing FIFA? Dude, or? Honestly, look, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, this is a funny story, man. I was, um, again, uh, I was deployed, right? And, um, you know, I, I was in Kuwait at the time. And uh, there was a, uh, there was a, our translator that was with us. He's a local guy. Mm -hmm. And he was like, um, me and my boys were talking about watching the game. And we we're, we're talking about watching the football game. Now, keep in mind, um, was it football? I don't remember. I forgot what it was. We were talking about watching an American sports game, right? In our while we're working, in our in our translator was there, and he goes, "Oh, you watch game?" And I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "We're gonna watch the game." And keep in mind, over there, there's a USO tent. Mm -hmm. There's one TV in there, right? You got to be the first one to win, you know, to win the TV, yeah. or else, you know, what I mean, or else you're not gonna get to pick what you're gonna watch. So we're like, "Yeah, we're gonna watch the game." And he goes, "I'll meet you there," right? And we're like, "Okay, cool." Like we didn't know what he. I thought we all thought he we would go watch the same game. Well, we pulled up. You know, me and my friend showed up. It was like 2, 3 in the morning because obviously over there it's like yeah. stupid crazy, right? And he's watching a Champions League game. He was watching Real Madrid, and that was the first time I ever watched real real soccer. You know what I mean? Like I grew up, I, I always tell my uncles, I'm like, dude, I hate you guys because if you guys would have showed me European soccer instead of Mexican soccer, I probably would have played. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm, I'm the first one to tell you that I hate watching Mexican soccer. <laughs> yeah. I can't stand it, dude. But if you go and watch, you know, you watch the game at its, you know, at its purest form, man, you watch. It was amazing. And that's when I saw Marcelo play for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I named my youngest after, after him, Marcelo, which is you the, know, the defender. He's he was a, defender. He's a left back. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he was a full back for for those, you know, for those golden years that were on Madrid yeah. when, you know, Cristiano was there, all those guys were there. But uh, Marcelo was the one that stood out to me. It's like, dude, that boy's defending out here, mm -hmm. and he's still pushing the pace up top. Like, that was just beautiful to watch for me. And uh, yeah. that's when I was like, dude, this thing ain't, ain't half bad. One of my all-time favorite soccer players, um, Roberto Carlos from Brazil. Yeah. Same thing, man. Mm -hmm. Little dude, but that fucker, he would go all the way from the back to the front. And he had a fucking cannon on oh, him. Yeah. Like, no, I think we, me and my son were watching the, the his uh, his free kick. That one, um, we got it on the outside of his foot. Uh -huh. <sighs> Dude, oh my god! But no, yeah, Roberto, Roberto Carlos was amazing. Yeah. And then you know, as far as tactics go, believe it or not, I play a lot of FIFA. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. I was I was pretty I was pretty high pretty competitive. You know, uh, yeah. uh, ultimate team player yeah. for a while there. You can ask my wife; she hated life for a while there. But. Um, no, nah, man, it's just, you know, I'm very good. You know, even when I played football, American football, it was one of those things for me that I wasn't always the fastest and I wasn't always the biggest, mm -hmm. but I was always the smartest person on the field. You can ask, you know, anybody who's ever watched me play will tell you, like, dude, you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. But to me, it's all about studying. I take great pride in, dude, like, here's one thing about the community, right? That's our community <coughs> that people don't seem to grasp is that, dude, at the end of the day, we're all, we should all still be students of the game, mm -hmm. right? Like, you hear a lot of coaches like, oh, I can't coach these guys anymore like they want to know more to show them there's always something to show them right it's yeah. just you got to learn it right so I'm, I'm a big student of the game and every opportunity I get I'm I'm picking somebody's brain you know what I mean and in this community one thing I think the biggest flaw this community has is everyone is in competition with one another mm -hmm. right so it's like their pride is you know they they carry their pride so much so that if I don't know some of them, I'm gonna, you know, and I know you know, I'm I don't give I don't give a shit. I'll be like, hey my guy, hey, how do you how do you organize this or what tactical instructions do you give this position here for that movement? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, and I'm very big on that. And you know, you can, you know, a lot of the coaches will, will testify to it where it's like, dude, I'll, if you just beat me, right? Which yeah. is a rare occasion, but yeah. if you just beat me and I saw something very specific that I'm like, dude, that's fucking awesome. I'm gonna go and ask you after the game, not during the game, right? Obviously, because you're not gonna give away your excuse me, your tactics or whatever, but I'm going to be like, hey, my guy, like, how'd you, what did you tell him or what is it that, and yeah, no, and they'll tell me and they'll, you know, they're very open about it, but nonetheless, everybody else, dude, like, they're too prideful to, like, even admit, like, I don't know how he does that. That's, and that's the thing, like, it's funny you, you mentioned that because I've been, ironically, I've been thinking about that um, with this whole podcast thing, like, I'm trying to reach out to other creators and other 
people doing something similar to me because there's shit that I still don't know. Like I've been doing this for like three months and like even like my camera work, the lighting and stuff, it's shit that I'm figuring out. And um, I see other people do stuff. And I'm like, that's fucking cool. Like, I wonder how they do that. And I'm trying to reach out to other people. And I, and I get that sense where some people don't want to like, they don't want to yeah. collaborate. And yeah. it's, and it's not like, it's not like I'm, I'm there to steal ideas and stuff like that. But the way I see it, it's a win-win because I can learn something from you and you can learn something from me. Right. Absolutely. And that's the whole point of collaborating and, and, I, I saw that with um with like the guests that we bring on. Like every guest that we bring on, they bring a little bit to our channel and I'm hoping they, you know, take yeah. a little something too. No, absolutely. No, and like I told you before, even before we started, I said, dude, like I'm really looking like I would really want to do this myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like even jokingly, I was, you know, I got something to say. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> but nonetheless, nah, man, it's just it's just, you know, that's that's um one of the biggest things that I think one of the biggest hurdles as a community that needs to that we need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. is um, everyone Everyone says they're here for the kids. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say that. It sounds pretty. It's a nice slogan, right? Yeah. But are you really? You know what I mean? Like, are you really? Or is this, or are you just feeding your own ego? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I ran into that to where it's like, oh, it's about the kids, it's about the kids. But it's like, but you're keeping them from opportunities because why? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Why? Because, like, well, so you're not allowing your kid to... This certain player, hey, my guy, like, I need a forward. You know what I mean? Like, I know you have a badass forward. Like, let me borrow him for the tournament. Nah, man. No, nah, I, don't, I don't. I'm like, bro, I'm going out of town. My guy, like, you know what I mean? It's an opportunity for your player. Like, I don't. Yeah, they're only going to gain experience and get better from it. Yeah, dude. But it's like, people, again, I think El Paso as a whole, we're, 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 everyone is so busy beating each other that mm -hmm. our platform will never go to the level of, of a Dallas or you know, of one of these in California, like one of these places that it's like these kids are actually playing at a top tier level against, mm -hmm. you know, national teams in the, in the nation. Here in El Paso, everyone is so small minded that it's like, no, no, no. Like our biggest goal is to beat is to beat so and so. Like, why? Do you think that's like the the culture, like the Hispanic culture where everybody's too proud or like they're too like, I don't know, like. I don't know. Look, honestly, I'm, and I'm going to hurt some feelings, man. But I think, honestly, I think at some point um, it's an ego thing. Like, I just think, honestly, I, I think a lot of these coaches out here are in it for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them are, you know, they'll show off their trophy collection, right? But they don't, they failed, they failed to mention that, oh, dude, you won a million trophies, but they were all in the second, third division of the competition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You see it a lot. Mm -hmm. You see it all over, all over social media, man. All these coaches will be like, oh, you know, so-and-so. I'm not gonna drop. I'm not gonna name drop. Right? I'm not gonna Let's name drop. Let's I do told it. myself I wasn't gonna name drop. Right? But there's a lot of them, dude. There's a lot of them that are like, oh, um, you know, blank. Uh, we won this. Oh, otro ganado. Right? But it's like my guy. Like I go in the snet. My guy, you're playing. You're playing in the third division, bro. Like, you know, and me, like, you know, I'm, and I have, I do have teams that do play in like the lower tier divisions, mm -hmm. right? But I'll, when I win, I'll put on there what division it is that we want. Like, I'm not shy about it. Like, oh, yo, we won the silver division, my guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next year we're going to, you know, or next season we're, we're getting promoted and we're going to play in this group, right? And and shout out shout out again to uh, Cesar and uh, Tere over at uh, EPPL who are implementing this promotion style um, thing where it's like, okay, go ahead and play the third division. Go ahead and roll yourself in it. If you win, you're going to move up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. next season there is no... Oh, I'm gonna stay here and win again. No, okay, let's go ahead and move up. See how good you really are. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so it's like, but yeah, it's all good, man. It's it's fun. You know, you learn a lot of things about about people, in in. But if you're in it for the kids, I think you never go wrong. Any decision you make, if you, if, if it's if you're putting the kids first, some people it might rub people some might rub people some it might rub some people the wrong way, but. At the end of the day, it is what it is. So going to the to to the girl squads, going back to that, you have two two girl squads right now, and you've they they've been recent, like they've just been added as of recent, right? Because they haven't been around very long. Or I know yeah. some of the girls played with your with the boys, but as far as an all girl squad, yeah. Well, see, I was always against the all girl thing, right? I was always against it, and I and and I would be the first to tell you, I was like, dude, why? No, like as long as the girls can physically still hang with the boys. They're going to play with the boys. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I always, you know, and 
all my girls, girl parents, I would tell them, you know, I'm like, dude, I'm not studying girls team. Don't ask me. Because they would ask me, like, hey, make him a, can you make him a girl? I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do it. You know, and, and I just never wanted to venture into it, to be honest with you. I just, I don't have a little girl of my own, right? So I'm like, dude, I don't even know how to talk to them. You know what I mean? And um, eventually, excuse me, we got to the point where, you know, some of the girls I did have, it was getting too, it was getting too big for them, right? It was becoming too, too like crazy, yeah. right? So it was like, dang, okay, well, I got to start looking into it. You know, and I told them, and I told uh, my coach at the time, um, Coach Danny, um, I was like, yo, man, I was like, well, I think we got to start looking into, you know, getting Jen a team, or, you know, trying to build that up. And I had a couple other girls, Mia, who's extraordinary, one of the best girls in the city, um, and her sister, amazing too. But it was one of those things that I'm like, dude, if we're going to do it, it's got to be done right, right? So we kind of put it on the back burner. Mm-hmm. And then slowly, um, I think first I inherited a, um, a group of girls, man, um, they were on a team and uh, they were unhappy for reasons I won't mention, but uh, they were unhappy, right? We'll just leave it. Parents were unhappy. And, uh, you know, I had a buddy of mine was was playing there and he goes, hey, man, like, if you're ever going to do it, now's the time to do it. And this, these are the girls that you saw today. And I was like, dude, I said, I said, guy, like, I don't want to go out of my way and, you know, bring in a bunch of girls. And I'm like, me already knowing I have some solid girls already here. Mm-hmm. I was like, I just need like, you know, I need to feel that, Ross. Like, if we were going to do it, it's got to be done legit. And um, he's like, nah, man, like, I'm telling you, like, you know, you just got to meet with them, blah, blah, blah. So he invited a a few of the parents over, and I had a training session with them, you know. And keep in mind, okay, I do want to make this clear, they were leaving anyway. Mm -hmm. They were going to bounce, right? I'm not one to go and steal kids. I don't steal steal any players. I don't don't believe in it. I've never done it. And they were going to bounce anyway. So to me, it was one of those, like, and I saw, keep it, I've, I've been known who they were. I knew that girl team, and they're they amazing. I was like, that girl, that, was, that girl team is nasty, bro. You know what I mean? They had a couple girls on there. You saw today that I'm like, yeah. oh, stop. Right? And I'm like, Probably the one that but, broke my wrist. <laughs> but I'm like, dude, I'm like, you know what? It is what it is. Like, that's, that's not my lane. It's not my lane. I'm not going to get in it. Right? But when I was like, dude, what? Like, why? Like, if you have that good of a team. Why are they wanting to leave? Like, what the hell? That's the equivalent of me losing my son's team. Yeah. Like, if everybody just one day is like, ah, oh, we're out. Like, a group, like, you know, the, the core group just wanted to leave me. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me, right? Anyway, long story short, they ended up like, okay, let's do it and blah, blah, blah. And so I inherited it, that 2015 squad, right? And I mixed them with the girls I already had. And now they're nasty, right? They're the best straight up. And then within time... Um, Again, it happened. It was that same group, of, same group of you know, um, that same team. The older ones, though, I had a group of them reach out to me. We're like, hey, we're looking to move. We're unhappy, blah blah blah. And I'm like, listen, like, again, like, dude, that's. And I had set it up to where it's like, again, me and Danny. Remember, I just finished saying it. Mm-hmm. We had already spoke about like it's time for us to start looking to get these girls a team. Yeah. And so it just so happened that I, I promise you, it was just like perfect timing, dude. And it was like, yo, bring them. Like, let's just see what happened. And we ended up building that squad like overnight almost, you know. And now, now granted, the team, you know, I think the older ones right now, we we still gotta prove. Right now, we're sitting at number two. Right, we still gotta, you know, get over that mountain. We gotta hit the mountaintop. But with this new venture that we're doing, it's gonna bring in some new, some fresh talent and some very stack, you know, very talented girls that I think we'll be able to compete with the best. And you know, I think my 15s are already the best. But now I think my, you know, with this new venture, I think we can compete with the best. You know, and um, you know, not to take anything away at all from where they came from, because you know, those girls are badass. They're, those girls are badass, dude. Like if you watch them play, those girls are badass, bro. Yeah. Straight up. But whatever reasons they weren't happy for, you know, that's none of my business. You know, they came to me, so it was like, dude, I'll be stupid to say no. It, I, I was put in that predicament where it's like, dude, if you say no, you're fucking retarded. You're retarded. So I got a question. Sorry. So you've coached both boys and girls. Which ones are easier to coach? I have a theory. Shit. That's tough. That's tough. But the reason why it's tough is because it's easier for me to talk to the boys. Mm-hmm. It's easier for me to hold them accountable, for sure. Because I don't give a shit. 
You know what I mean? Like they've all been with me for so long and my son was the first one to tell you like my dad's a dick, but <laughs> you know, but none of, like, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, I'm the same way with every, all my boys, all of you know what I mean? They'll all tell you, like, I'm not, I, I'm gonna grill you. You fuck, like if you, if you fucking up, I'm gonna tell you, right? Mm -hmm. But with the girls, it's like, again, I don't have a little girl of my own, right? And these parents will tell me, dude, like, get on them, bro. Get on them. <laughs> I'm like, hell no, guy. If I had a little girl of my own, I'd be dead if a grown-ass man's going to yell at my daughter, bro. Yeah. Like, you crazy. You know what I mean? So it's hard for me to, to really get into it. However, that being said, the girls bring a lot more joy to our training sessions than the boys do. The boys are, yo, it's business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I can talk to them the way I'm talking with you, but we're here to work. Whereas the girls, it's like, we're here to work, but oh my God, coach, I love your hair today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I'm like, dang, bro. Like, I'm, here I am all mad, right? Because I just finished coaching the boys or something. And yeah. I'm all mad and, you know, tense. And they're like, hi, coach. And it's like, oh my God. And you got to compliment their hair. And they're like, oh my God, I just, you know, today one of my girls had, to, had just finished, she got her bangs done. Yeah. And a different color. And I was like, and I noticed it. And I don't give the boys, I don't give a shit. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I noticed the new cleats or something. I'm like, yo, fresh cleats, bro, chill. <laughs> the girls, like, they got it. She got her hair did. I'm like, yo, I love your hair today. And she goes, oh my God, you noticed? Thank you. I was like, of course I, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a different vibe, man. But I enjoy coaching both, to be honest with you. I enjoy, but I'll tell you one thing that I'm just now experiencing that I was not looking forward to is these little girls are becoming young ladies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the parents will tell me, like, hey, you know, so-and-so, like, she's off, you know, well, she'll tell me she's honest, so just, you know, just so you know. And so I'm like, the first time I ever got that message, I'm like, oh, shit, well, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean? And I was like, you tell me that she just got it just so I know, but what does that mean? What does it entail? You know what I mean? But I can see it, though. Like, mm -hmm. it is one of those that I'm like, oh, shit, dude. Like, <laughs> I was not prepared for this. Yeah. Like, I was not prepared for it, man. But, nah, it's, I love, I love what I do, bro. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think I owe your girls like six hundred bucks. How much did it add oh, up no, to? You? Say they they counted up to seven. I think they. I think they were doing a hundred dollar per goal. A uh, hundred dollar <laughs> per goal at these scores. <laughs> they said a thousand dollars. I'm sure. I'm gonna have to I sell my equipment. <laughs> <laughs> so I was gonna ask right now. You you brought up your your son, your oldest son, um, and you say and and you said you can ask him. He knows I'm a dick. Like so, the thing I'm having you know, an issue with is I have my son, right? Tadeo, he's five years old, going to be six. Um, and I feel like I get on his ass, man. And I don't, I'm sure you've seen me at the games. I'm yeah. fucking. Here's the thing, man. Here's one thing that I tell all my parents, and I'm very open about this. And I mean this seriously. And I really do mean this. Let us as coaches be the bad guys. Yeah. Let me be the bad guy. You know what I mean? Like when, when we hold them, let, let us be the, be the, nah, you fucking up. Like within the game, right? Within the game and within what you want out of him when he's playing. Yeah. Let us coaches be the disciplinary. When once they once they get in the car, like dude, it's difficult for me, obviously, with my son. I'm I'm the discipline, I'm the coach, and I'm still his dad, right? So that that's my wife's role. My wife takes that role where it's like, stop talking to him like that. Or stop. She has to bring me back. It's like you're a dad now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's like you as a father, you gotta be the encouraging part. Like, you know, like if, hey, wait, 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 wait. you know, you're on him, you're on him, you're grilling him. If you're grilling him and Coach Eddie's grilling him too, what do you think your son's going to feel? He's going to be like, man, what the fuck? Man, I can't do nothing right out here. Does that make sense? And that becomes an issue. Fucking dogs, bro. And that becomes an issue where, no, facts. No, but there's a, uh, you know, that's what you need to do. I, that's my advice to you, I think, is... Um, with me, obviously, I had to separate that. And I'm, I still work on it, dude. Like, me, us as fathers, it's really hard as sports fathers at that, right? Not even just fathers. Because even just fathers, dude, we don't know what we're doing. Right? We can say we can talk all the shit we want, but, dude, we're winging this shit, right? Especially me and you, knowing, knowing you know, our family background. Like, dude, I'm winging the shit out of this. You know what I'm saying? But if we're sports fathers, dude, like, if we want our kids to really excel and enjoy the grind, that's what that's really what I tell everybody. I'm like, you got your son, daughter has to enjoy getting better. Yeah. It's not it's easy for 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 all of us to enjoy those moments where we're successful for our kids. Like, oh, you scored a goal. Like, when he played amazing, how easy is that for you on the way home? That's easy, bro. Like, oh, you killed it. He's loving life, you're loving life, your wife's loving life. We're all happy. 
it's when those days where it sucks, when it's shitty, he played like shit, and you're driving home and you're fucking him up and you're grilling him. He doesn't want to hear that. Yeah, and and I think the thing is right. Like, I see him play sometimes, and then like I can see his potential, man. Like he he's five years old, but fuck, he can play. Like, and there's days where he goes to the game, and I'm just like, that's not you, dude. I, and I know you're being lazy, and I know you're you're not you're not putting it in the work. And I remember, um. What was this when when they were playing? Still, they were playing uh, at uh at Mike's. Mm -hmm. Like the last couple of games at Mike's, he kind of, like he was on it right in the beginning, boom boom, and then like the last three games, he kind of like really just slowed down, and he was just like not wanting to play. And I was like, and I wasn't on him, and I was like, what the fuck? So then we went to EPPL, and it dragged on to like the next two games, and I was like, so I remember one of the games, um, after the game, he was like. He, I mean, he wasn't running, dude. He was, like, walking. Like, he was just, he was, you right? Mm -hmm. And I had told him the game before. I was like, dude, if you don't start playing, like, you're not going to like what happens. And he was like, didn't give a shit. So after the game, he, he had played a game. And then he had played with the 2017s. Uh -huh. And now it was just shitty. So after the game, he was, like, ready to go home and everything. And I was like, no, come here. And he was like, I was like, come on. So we went to the back of the field. And I stood, like, maybe from, like, this wall to that wall. And then I was, like, run to the wall and come back. <laughs> and he was, like, looking at me. That is already sprints out here, And bro. he looked at me, like, what? <laughs> and I was, like, I'm telling you, dude, run. I He ran for maybe, it was, like, 15 minutes. But it was, like, nonstop. Boom, boom, boom. And one of the times he's running back, he's he's crying. Like, he's I can see the tears yeah. start rolling. And I'm, like, what's wrong? I'm tired, and I'm like, now you're tired. I'm like, but you weren't putting in that work, dude. Like, mm -hmm. and I felt, and and it was crazy because right after that, the next game, turned it Killed around, it. and I felt like a fucking asshole doing it, right? I'm watching him do it, but after I was done, and after you know he started, mm -hmm. you know he came back, I was like, oh shit, like, yeah, it actually helped him. But it's kind of hard to, you know, be like. How far, you know, how far is well, too far? And then, you know what I mean? Well, I think what you got to focus on, I think what you got to focus on as um, as they get older is encourage the effort. Yeah. Encourage the effort. Don't encourage the success. Encourage the effort, right? Like on that moment, you told him, well, now you're tired. Yeah. Right? So what he grabbed from that was, okay, bet. Like, I'm supposed to be tired after the game. Yeah. Right? So then, now on another note, though, dude, there's professional players. Some of the greatest players in the world will disappear for three weeks yeah you know what i'm saying where they're just just blank for three weeks nothing yeah. on the sheets bro you know what i mean it's just there and these are four and five years old four and five, <laughs> five year old guy yeah. and i'll tell you know and i tell eddie and i tell even frankie my 2019 coach um oh, this fucking dog i'm like yo i'm like dude leave him alone i said they're fucking babies dog yeah like yo y'all didn't see when i was started with these guys over here yeah i had to hold their hand and fucking you know what I mean? Like when before I took over, like the coach would carry rope, my son would carry him on the field. Like, look, you run here, you run here. That's what we that's what we had. Yeah. The fact that y'all are out here fucking killing it and your boys and girls are just like bah, 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 and you see them and you're like, dude, we're fucking nasty. Dude, that's a privilege in itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, take that shit as as like, okay, but let's build on it. Yeah. Let's not diminish like, dude, they're gonna be, they're gonna go like this is it. It's a it comes in waves, bro. You got to yeah. give the little man a break. Yeah, no, I know. I do. And I, and for a while, I did sit back, right? And I and I would just go watch him and I would, you know, hey, good job, you know, and do things like that. Um, and I felt like that was working. But I feel like I, I sometimes I do need to get on his ass because if I, I feel like if I lay off weight a little bit too much, then he's just like, ah, like, I'm good. Like, ah, I ain't got to worry about it. And I don't know. Yeah, like you're saying, they're kids, and he's five, right? And and it, it it's just hard, man. Bro, he's five. You're there's so five year olds. Listen, there's five year olds, my guy, who still who still can't count, bro. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like like that's what like, you gotta. That's what you gotta look at it, bro. Because look yeah. how e look how easy this this conversation could go, right? Yeah. Your son, right, Tadeo, and my son Marcelo are the same age. Yeah. They're both 2018, right? I see your kid playing. I'm like, fuck, man. I wish Marcelo could run as hard and as kick the ball as hard as Tadeo can. But yet you're pissed at Tadeo for not running harder. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You see how you see how the how it can flip on you yeah. real quick. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to look at it. Like, one, don't, that's why don't ever compare your kids to other kids. And two, dude, you build on what you already have. Yeah. Like, don't try to, like, fucking, no, nah, fucker. Nah. Like, it's one thing, like, yo, you, you bullshitting today. Like, yo, you bullshitted today. You know you did. Mm-hmm. Like, hold them accountable. I'm not telling you not to hold them accountable. But my guy, there's no reason the man should be running sprints after a game, bro. There's no reason You're just an asshole, man bro. should be out here running sprints, dog. I do that one Why the time. five-year-old out here running suicides, bro? No, and, you want to pull it? No, go ahead. Keep going. And, and no. you're going to bed with no dinner. And, that, and, that, and that's where I have to kind of sit back, man, and look at and, – and my wife, too, right? Like you said, your wife, she has to be like, hey, dude, like, again, he's fucking five years old, dude. Yeah. Like, and it's yeah. like, yeah, you're right. But you get – I guess it's just like – you see how 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 good they're doing and how good you know how the potential and you're just like you want more. You want to build it. You want to like let's go now, yeah. dude. It's a it's a it's it's a game that, dude. My listen, my son, my oldest, didn't really start taking off until I let off. Yeah. Did you know that? Like he didn't really like do one of these. Like oh shit, that dude's actually fucking nasty. Until I was like, hey, come on, bro. Like, do you want to do this or not? Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't want to do it, bro, it's cool. We'll do something else. Yeah. He goes, nah, dad. And at this point, he was able to communicate with me. Like, dude, it's just like, if I fuck up, you're going to get on me. Like, if, you know, and he communicated that to me. Like, remember, it's, it's again, it's a different it's a different conflict with me because obviously I was his coach and I'm still his pops, right? But with you have to take that into consideration whenever you're yelling at him or whenever you're trying to hold him. Like, dude, like, you're his pops. You know what I mean? You're his fucking superhero. So if you're, like, fucking always fucking him up, yeah. you know, because he didn't fucking – do as good as, you know, whoever, right? Because so-and-so's killing it, but you're out here slacking it. Like, who fucking gives a shit, guy? Yeah. He's five years old. Let the little man breathe, bro. <laughs> Let him live a little bit. Yeah. So what's been your your proudest moment as a coach? I mean, I'm sure there's a few, but the one that was like, damn, this is this is what. You know what? I didn't start taking this whole thing seriously until I won this trophy here. That's why it's right next to me right here. This is my most. This is my most important trophy here because this was the first time we won a, a legit tournament was this trophy here it's all beat up already and it's all it's pretty old but we had gone to this tournament before twice before and both times we were embarrassed both times this was when my oldest was playing four on four still mm-hmm. and it was like dude this is i don't know if we're gonna keep you know what i mean and this was the very first time we accomplished what we set out to do and I remember the joy that I felt when I saw the joy that my boys, that the, that the, that the squad felt. Like, I saw it in their faces, how, yeah. how, like, they were so thrilled that I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like, that's where, that's where I get my joy, right? Like, I get my joy seeing my kids succeed. Mm-hmm. And I say kids, like, plural, like, like I'm saying um, all my players. When they succeed, that's where I get my, where I get what I want out of it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm there every day, bro. My wife will tell you. I work a regular job. I work from fucking eight to four every day. I work through lunch. I work straight out, straight eight hours. Yeah. I commute over an hour and a half every day, right? I get here, I change, and I go to the park every single day. Every single day I'm training. I'm training from five to about 8.30 every single day. Today I made an yeah. exception for you guys, but nonetheless, I would have still been out there. I would have barely been getting home right now. And I left my house at 7.30 in the morning. Damn. 7.15 in the morning. But I would barely now be getting home. This is every day. Every single day. Right? And, again, I enjoy doing it because it gives me a purpose in a sense. Mm -hmm. Right? But the reason why I even started, like, legit taking this seriously, because before, because I was coaching, remember, I I told you guys, I took over the team. And we hadn't blown up yet. It wasn't, like, a huge thing. I had, like... 20 dudes, 20 kids. But I was also coaching at Riverside Middle School, right? Shout out Coach Recorder, doing great things over there at Riverside. And um, he's like, dude, like, come on, whatever. So I started coaching at the middle school. I was coaching football and I was coaching baseball. And so these kids, man, that's when I realized, like, dude, this is too, there's too late. These kids have, you know, this generation nowadays, there's no pride. You know what I mean? There's no work ethic. There's no, dude, I, Check this story out. My very first, my very first football practice ever, coaching at Riverside at the middle school. My very first one, dude. 
We're, these guys are running sprints, right? Mm -hmm. They're running sprints. Everyone's got their helmet on, blah, blah, blah. There's a dude, excuse me. There's a dude. He's about 6'2". This is a seventh grader. About 6'2". Oh, two, about 240. Huge dude. I'm like, oh, shit. That's <laughs> exciting as a coach. Like, holy shit, bro. Like, hell yeah. Yo, so this kid takes his helmet off, right, on the far end when they're doing sprints, leaves it over there, and he keeps running. Obviously, dude, we're not doing that shit, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you play, you know, put your helmet on, bro. He's like, you know, what are you doing? And he goes, no, it's because I can't breathe. And I was like, what do you mean you can't breathe? Are you okay? He's like, no, I'm okay, but the face mask doesn't let me breathe. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you grew up, you played ball, right? You mm -hmm. played football. Like, dude, you don't, you know how much you would get fucking, fuck, you get fucked up. <laughs> you tell that shit to coach, you know, to one of your coaches. But I tell you, coach record, coach work. Like, yo, I can't, my face, what? Bro, I'm getting killed, bro. But anyway, so at that point, I call everybody in, right? And, I, and then the whole team. And I like, take your helmet off. So everyone takes their helmet off. I'm like, okay, put it back on, right? And I was like, everybody take a deep breath. I was like, can you guys breathe? And everyone was like, yes, sir. You know, and this, guy, this kid's like, and I'm like, see, everyone can breathe. How come you can't breathe with your face mask <laughs> on? Yo, Tommy, hold on, hold on. Here's the, here's the kicker. Tell me why the next day... I get called into the assistant principal's office and oh tell me that God. I cannot be singling kids out like that. It's, yeah. It's our generation. You know everyone's I'm, gone fucking I said, soft, what? Man. I said, that's yeah. when I really, and that's when I was like, you know what, bro? I can't do it. Like, there's no way, there's nothing that I can do for these kids, like legitimately really change their perspective and their, and their, and their thought processes that it, I just couldn't do it. So I said, I'd rather... Stop doing this, because that was the plan, right? After I got out, I was going to go to school, get my degree, and coach at the, you know, at the next level, mm -hmm. right? But to me, like, I'm trying to make a difference, you know what I mean? And, and, and I was at that point, I was, I was pushing to be like a coach recorder, a coach work, right? The high school work, because those men had a great influence in the person who I became. Mm -hmm. But that's when I realized that the reason why I became who I became was not because of those gentlemen. They did help me, you know, through those tough years that I had. But the reason why I became the man that I became was because of Coach Vic, which was coach, he was he coached the Renegades back in the day, right? And that man, he was my my youth coach, right? Mm -hmm. And he was he was a you know, he was a godsend for my parents. My parents will tell you, like, he paid for everything, dude. He paid for all our equipment, all our registrations, everything. That man just loved doing it. And so that's when I said, that's who I'm gonna be. You know, and fast forward now, now you see like everyone that's gonna leave my program, everyone who leaves the program, my goal is you're going to go and you're going to go into school. You're going to sit, you know, you're going to sit in the front. You're going to be a respectable young man or young lady that has great pride in what they do. And you understand that hard work is the only way to get what you really want. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I'm trying to instill with these guys, you know, moving forward. And that's my, I guess, you know, return to the community, man. That's how I got to where I'm at. And the, oh, oh, no, go on, go on. And so, and that that's my thing, right, with my kids is I don't want to have that problem that kid had where he goes and gets upset because someone told him, hey, you can breathe. I can't breathe with my helmet and Coach Jay singled me out. Like, I don't give a fuck. Well, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I took my helmet out. But you should have taken your fucking helmet yeah. off, right? So yeah. I feel like sometimes that's why I feel like I get on my kids and it's like, because I don't want that kid. Yeah. I don't want to have that kid where he's like, oh, like, you know, coach is talking to me this way, like, who gives a fuck? I talk to you like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, and and I think that 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 follows with with parents. You know, it, you can do you know you can do what you can as a coach, but you only have them for a certain amount of time a day. Mm -hmm. When they go home, it's like, what are parents doing, right? What are parents saying? You know, oh yeah, you're right. He shouldn't be saying these things to you. Or, like no man, like if you're not you're not disrespecting the kids, you're not doing anything like that, but. You're being firm. You're being, you know what I mean. You're, you're, you're trying to show them that, that not everything is easy. Oh man, and you know, on that subject, dude. You know, as far as parents goes, I, you know, just recently I had an issue where, um, I'm, I'm the same all the way around, right? I mean, you're witness to it. I'm, I'm the same with every kid, dude. It doesn't matter, whatever level you're at. I'm gonna hold you to the same standard, <clears throat> and my standards are simple. You give me full effort. If you're gonna come out here and bullshit, dude, like I'm not, I'm not gonna deal with you. Like I'm not, cause you're wasting my time. I had a, I had a player, man. He came out and tried out last week. Now, this kid came out to try out for my son's team, 
my 2013. Okay, now keep in mind, that's a tough squat to break. That's a tough squat to get into, right? Because I've had them for so long. Like, dude, there's just, they're temples on another level. So what happened is Buddy came out and I was giving him the benefit of the doubt for the first half hour. I'm like, dude, like, okay, you don't get it. I understand. But you got to go. Like, we got to push. I, I, we can't have you, like, out here, like, uh, and lazy, right? It, it was a laziness that was being that was being communicated. It was like, dude, I'm like, come on. And I kept telling him, come on, bro, I need you to run. Come on, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I'm trying to set that tone to keep up with everybody because everybody else is, we're here, we're here. And we set up, a, it was a simple rondo that we do, just, you know, getting him going. And um, he was in the middle and he was walking, dude. I don't know if you know what a rondo is. You know what a rondo is? No. So there's four dudes in a square, and there's one in the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and the dude, the kid is just walking. He's walking. And, and so at that point, I had, we had five rondos going. Mm. We had five, and I'm making my rounds like this, right? And he was in this one. And, and keep in mind, he was with, with my girls, with my older girls, right? Which is not an easy task to say, right? But it's not where my where like the boys were mm -hmm. like where the you know where my first team like the boys he was with my first team girls right which is still the same quality touch it's just a just a, just just that step slower yeah right but he was walking dude and so i walked around and i told him i said if you don't walk i said i'm gonna i'm gonna send you home i mean i'm sorry if you don't run i'm gonna send you home bro like come on like stop wasting my time let's run and doing that and he saw okay and he started running i made my rounds back around and I look, but he's walking, bro. But he's not even walking to where he's tired. Like, because he's tired. It's not a tired thing. It's, it's just, like just kind of like. Walk. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, go home. I'm like, bro, if you're not going to run, go home. I was like, you either run or go home. He took off. He left. And I was like, dude, like. And then, I mean, I was communicated later, you know, from, from, from his parent. Like, oh, like, you know, that was mean. You, you should talk to us. And. You know, but, you know, I mean, to me, it's like, dude, you came to try out for me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. dude, I'm sorry. Like, I get it. Yeah, like, I should have maybe tried to stop him, I guess. But it's just like, to me, it's like, dude, like, I'm not going to, you know, keep you here and then go and try and comfort you. Like, I'm sorry. Your son just doesn't like running. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, I don't have time for that. Because now I'm taking away from everybody that 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 is here to work. Mm -hmm. Right? When I, everyone who is giving me the effort is here. And I'll be the first to tell you, dude. Like, my coaches will tell you, like, bro, stop. Did you really let him come back? I'm like, dude, he came out here and he busted his ass. Like, fuck it. If you, you develop that. We develop that, right? Because yeah. effort is half the battle, bro. Like, if, if, if the kid is here to work, that's easy. Like, bet money. Like, I'll, I'll work with you. But if you come out here, bro, like, out here with nothing, it's your, like, you're really trying to make this team and you're out here walking, I'm sorry, bro. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I think we, we've lost a lot of that, of that hard work and, in, in everything and and I I see it because I I'm a manager at a store and a lot of the people that I work with they're all like coming out of high school like barely starting college with 18 18 to 20 and some of these dudes they walk like I'm not gonna say any names because they watch <laughs> but you got fans out there they're fans dude, they're they're walking there like you know no sense of urgency no sense of no, urgency I hate that dude and I just think of like I I was never I was never like that man. Even when I was young, and I, there's one thing like you don't know how to do something right, but then you still like try and. But yeah, there's there's that there's not that urgency, and I don't know what it is. It's like our society, like they're, I don't feel like we're failing people. Like what the fuck? Like we need more. I think we need more coaches in life. Well, you know, we need. I think what it is is, um, I think I think what it was or. What is it, man? There's a saying, dude. See if I can think of it. But it's like hard times make, what is it, hard people or something like that, right? I hard think it's times like hard make, times make, uh, what is it, strong men or There you go. Like hard that? times make strong men. Strong, make, strong men make easy times. Yeah. Easy times make weak men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think for the longest there, I think our, our – I think – not our parents per se, right? Because it was there's a generation mm -hmm. between our parents and us that that was that were adults, yeah. right? Those are the kids that we see now that yeah. are in between our kids and us. Yeah, right. So those kids, those those parents were like are super like here you go, here you yeah. go. It's okay, it's all right, it's all right. Don't it's okay, it's okay. 
Mm-hmm. And so these kids are growing up entitled. These kids are growing up like, you you know, we the, the, the world owes them something. Yeah. Where it's like, fuck no, bro. Like, no. Like, I was, when I was raised, you know what I mean? Like, my mom busted her ass. My guy and I saw her every single day bust her ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, the least I can do is is show up and bust, you know, and bust my ass. Like, mm-hmm. this is that simple. But it's like, somewhere along the lines, we forgot. We forgot what makes us who we are as fucking Americans, dog. <laughs> fucking Americans, not that Mexico jersey. Dude. What the hell you want? Know, I man? show up to the field and he's like, "You're gonna have to burn that." I'm like, what the fuck? No, and then this and listen, and I do want to. I am Mexican American, okay? I'm Mexican American, and, and I. But I fought for America. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it's just, it's just to me that is, and that's that simple. And now that I watch, I actually watch international play. Yeah. It's like, dude, Mexico's a fucking joke. They're, they are, but they're Mexico's so a disappointing fucking joke, every fucking time. <laughs> Mexico's a joke, bro. And uh, you're starting to see the U.S., you know, start kind of. So here's a question. Here's a question. Here, right. So how mm-hmm. do you, because the, this isn't the first time we've said this about the U.S. Yeah. This isn't the first time where we're like, oh, shit. Yeah, we're yeah. we, we going we to get there now. We're going to break that. How, we've said that before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's sustainable? So. <laughs> Go ahead. It's kind of hard, man, because I've seen it a lot, right? Where, yeah, like you said, the U.S., you're like, oh, okay, it, it, it looks good. But it, it's just, I don't know, man. I don't know how to answer that question. But it's I, tough, I, I, I right? don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like, I, feel like I, I see a little bit, just a little bit of a difference than mm-hmm. I've seen in the past. Okay. I, I do see a little bit, you know, a little bit more different than the past. And I, I think... We're kind of headed in the right path. I think the U.S. has kind of figured out what needs to be done a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. To start, you know, competing with, you know, those other countries that, you know. So let me throw this at you, right? You all know my philosophy on it or my thought on it. Do you know why the U.S. is slowly getting better? Because of, well, I think it's because of the MLS. They're no. putting a lot more funding into it now. No. No. You want me to tell you why? Yeah. Because less parents are putting their kids in American football. I was going to and I was going to bring that mm. up the American the yeah the American football is what's taking away from that dude cuz we have so many fucking athletes that mm. that do that and mm-hmm. I was going to say I didn't want to sound racist dude but I'm like you see some of these brothers right now <laughs> playing soccer and you're like yo these dudes oh, out here shit. balling no, yo no you're right though I mean you're right at the end of the day you're right yeah. but it's like but that's what it is though I that's my opinion yeah. I think the US is finally able to catch up because our best athletes are not just you know playing football now I think now with all the, you know, the, all the CTE and all that stuff that's going on with all the, you know, football wise, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, me, for example, me as a parent, dude, like 20 years ago, my son's putting on fucking pads when he's yeah. five years old. Yeah. I don't give a shit. My guy, you're playing. You're going to earn your stripes and you're going you're gonna to get knocked down. You're going to get up. Yeah. 20 years ago, that's the mentality. Right. Because I was there. Right. Because that was me. Because it was me that was getting picked up. Like, get your ass up. You're going to keep going. Yeah. Right now, it's like, hell no. I see some of these kids out here, bro. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. You know what I mean? And my son's a little dude, you know, for his, well, I mean, they, you know, in his, in his class, he's like a big dude. But I see him. I'm like, dude, stop. <laughs> like, stop. I have, I have coaches who, who coach football and youth football. And I see their kids. I'm like, dude, stop. Like, dude, your kid is 10 years old and he's, he's out here benching 145. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing to this yeah. man, bro? Like, no way. Nah, see, I ain't with it. No, and I have I had the same problem with my, you know, with my son. I, for you know, growing up, I was like, damn. When I have my kids, shit, they're gonna be playing football. But going through you know concussions, injuries, and all that shit, I get to my son and I'm like, I don't know if I want him to do that. Mm. I don't know if I really want to you know, put him through that. Put shit. him through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still suffer for that shit daily. Yeah. When I get up this chair, you're going to see it's going to be a little slow. You know what I mean? It's going to be a little slow because usually around this time is when I'm getting home and my body's like, okay. It's, you're rip. cooling down. It's like, stuff. oh, yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Because my adrenaline and all that is going through in practice. But when I get home, dude, you can ask my wife. I'll sit on the couch, bro. I'll sit on the couch until it's time for me to go for me to get shower and go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Like, because I don't, like, everyone, all my parents always joke around with me when I'm like, oh, you're getting old. I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> I've been old, bro. Like, my knees are about 60. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I was a workhorse, man. So it was like, and then the Army didn't do me any favors either. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, dude, I'm really, I really do, I really am in pain every day. Every day I come home and I'm in pain. Mm 
How old are you right is, now? I'm 34. 34? Okay. Yeah. But like every day I'm in pain. Yeah. Right? Because like, I was med booted out the army. I, I broke my heel bone Ooh. in the army, right? So everything is, you know, my whole lower extremities are is crazy. When I get home, I'm in pain every single day, dude. Damn. You know, and, th- and that's another reason why I am the way I am with not only the kids, but my parents, with the parents. I'm like, listen, bro, like I'm out here. I'm out here. Like I'm out here giving you all I got. Mm-hmm. All I ask is at least fucking confirm if you're going to practice, bro. Like that's all I need you to do. Yeah. I don't need you to do anything crazy. I just need you to be like, yeah, we'll be there. Like I'm, you know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. what it upsets me a lot that parents just, you know. So in order to join one of your teams, do you post like tryouts or anything like that, or what's what's the process to get once you one of your teams? <sighs> Dude, at this point, um, see, because the, the, well, the I started really growing up, like growing. When it was like, I'm training right here, and then so-and-so's little brother's right here on the side. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, well, let's just make that little dude a team. Fuck it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then we'll make him a team. You know what I mean? And then it's like, and then sure enough, later on, I'm like, yo, who's that? Does he play? I'm like, oh, well, let's build them a team too. And, you know, a lot of, you know, the reason why I, I get this question a lot where it's like, dude, how do you sustain what you have? Because it, everybody else in the community is like, oh, he's here. Now he's there. Now he's there. Everyone loses players. Everyone's. Dude, but for the most part, I have like a 98% retain rate. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? But yeah. the reason why is because, one, they see the work. They see me out there. You know what I mean? They appreciate that. The parents do. But a lot of my squads are siblings, dude. Mm-hmm. A lot of my squads are like, dude, that's his little brother. That's his uncle. That's his cousin over there. Like, a lot of my squads have, every single one of my squads has at least two siblings in it. Every single one of them. Yeah. And then every single one of my squads, their coach their child plays for that squad. You know what I'm saying? It becomes one of those things where it's it's almost automatic. Like, dude, there is nowhere else to go. And so to me, what we're building now um, is going to be that. It's going to be exactly like, dude, we are the – this is where you want to be. Mm-hmm. There is nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to match your your effort and your work rate with, with our own. And I think that's what separates us from a lot of these teams out here, a lot of these clubs out here and – academies and whatever and i think you you it's good that you know you have the same families the same kids because the parents already know what it is right yeah you don't have parents coming in from somewhere else and like oh shit i don't like the way he's doing that or i don't like no these parents have already grown with the other kids Mm -hmm. and now they know how it's going to be you know bringing your other kids yeah it's a process so it helps so my son plays for um so the one of your kids, right? The 2013s, the mm-hmm. kids, your main squad. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the kids that plays on his team, his dad coaches my son, and then has his daughter in that team as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's just like, yeah, you see, you know, brothers and sisters all playing. So, I mean, and then then it helps because like I have my <laughs> little one, right, Eliseo, and he's watching Tadeo practice, and now he's on the ball, dude. He's yeah, he's a year and a half, and he's you can he's see growing him up. The ball, in it. Dude. Yeah, hell yeah, man. So, and that's it. Guess what? If my man just go have a, you go have himself a little squad when yeah. he gets there. You know what yeah. I mean? But that's just the way it's uh, and it's like to me, you know, the the, the you know the, the the blueprint is already there. You know what I mean? Like I and I always do this, right? I always when people come in and they're like, oh well, why are you doing it this way? I'm like because I learned my lesson with those guys up there. Every lesson, you know, every squad as as we, every squad that gets younger is better than the one before. Mm-hmm. Like every single one. Like my 2019 squad right now, fucking crazy, bro. I think in the last two years, they've only lost one game. Like, and and they're, they're crazy. And they're all siblings, bro. I think only one of those kids isn't a sibling. Two of those kids aren't siblings. Everybody else is a sibling. Right? But they're nasty, bro. Like, if you watch them play, you're like, dude, what the fuck? And then, These are three, four, four-year-olds, bro. Like, like, stop. In soccer, like, I mean, I'm sure it's in a lot of sports, but the more you play with someone, the more you know them. Like, I, I had a few people that I used to play with, and I... I I liked playing with them because I already knew their style, right? A lot of times it was already up here. Yeah. Like I already knew like he was going to move this way. I was going to move that way or what to do. And that the longer you can retain that. And it's crazy. You see that, that high retention rate. Cause mm-hmm. then you just build it. Like it's like you're building yeah. a pedigree, you know, like, and then <laughs> what it does. Right. And my goal has always been, and I've always been, I've always been very open about it. My goal is to get it to where we're going to put you on a platform. You're going to be able to perform with the same people, like you said, that you already know, that mm-hmm. you're so comfortable in that environment and in that squad, when you get in front of somebody who matters, who has like, oh shit, yo, let me get that kid. 
Why? It's because you're be able to, you're playing so free because you already know everything around you. Does that make sense? Like, and obviously there's, there, there are benefits to, you know, putting in a different environment, put yourself in a different environment, put yourself in a different environment. But the way I've always said it, and I've always explained it to people, ain't no, look, and I'm, t- I'm going to say this to the camera. Nobody's coming out here to scout your 11 year old. Nobody's <laughs> scouting your 11 year old. Nobody is scouting your 11 year old. Okay, nobody. Whoever told you that they're scouting your 11 year old fucking lied to you. <laughs> Nobody's coming out here to scout them, bro. Stop. Okay, like, and that, that's one thing, like, dude, I hate it, dude. I hate hearing that shit because it's like, dude, don't fucking, don't lie to me, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, unless you're playing 11 on 11 at a high level, in a high level tournament, in a high level environment, that's the only time you're gonna the, the shit you're you're like oh there's scouts here okay bet there really are scouts there but mm-hmm. if you're playing seven on seven nine on nine nobody's scouting your fucking kid bro <laughs> stop telling parents this shit because it's not true it's not true like all these dudes that you see out there like you know like the the Pepe's and the Sendejas, all those guys those guys are badass right mm-hmm. but <clears throat> people claim them or whatever but it's like dude like Zendejas went to IMG like yeah. you know what I mean like people like they they. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were picked up elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They weren't fucking scouted in El Paso. And, and it's funny you say that because <coughs> um, I had my wife tell me, right? She was like, hey, um, there was this guy who was talking about, you know, he was he was interested in Tadeo going to that squad. And I was like, okay, why? No, he. she was supposedly they were saying, they, you know, they play international and they get recognized. And I'm like, he's five. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, dude, they're not looking funny, at us, bro. Dude. Stop, so, bro. That's so funny to so me, they had, dude. So they had talked, to, and they were like, I guess, I don't know who this guy was. I didn't even talk to him, and I was just like. So are these guys just trying to, like, make money off parents? And, or what? Dude, honestly, it's because it goes back to what I said, right? It goes back to, like, dude, in order for you to, in, some of these coaches, I, I kid you not, some of these coaches are really good coaches, bro. There mm-hmm. are some really good coaches out here. You know what I mean? They might be terrible with people, yeah. but they're amazing at, at, at coaching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They really are. But then there are some who just ride the fact that it's like, oh, I'm collecting the best players and I'm winning all this, so I'm him. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if they can convince you, if, if, if you're naive enough to believe that they're scouting your five year old, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm sure. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you might have not fell for it. You laughed it off, but I guarantee you there's somebody out there who's like, oh, shit, for real? Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, we got to go there. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop, bro. Yeah. And, and it's crazy because we. You're talking about that. That's a Cobra tournament, right? This one, yeah. Yeah. So we go to some of these tournaments, man, with the kids. And so the 2018 squad, man, they, they play and they, they crush teams. And then you go to the, the tournament and they're struggling. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Well, because they're bringing so many. I hate playing the tournaments, man, because everybody just gathers players. <laughs> and then they go into these tournaments and it's like. They Why is nobody bring, yeah, yeah, and it's like bring your like your fucking squad. Like bring the dudes you train. Yeah. The dudes you're training with daily, yeah. those are the ones I want to play against. Yeah, and, and we beat those guys, right? We'll beat those guys yeah. in the regular season, and all of a sudden they show up for the tournament, and you're like, that kid doesn't play, and that kid <laughs> doesn't like what the fuck? <laughs> and and we and we struggle sometimes, you know, and, and sometimes it works out for us, but yeah, and it's kinda it kind of sucks for the kids because I'm like, they're working hard, man, like together. They're I'll working hard. I'll tell you hard. this. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I do have to I do have to nip that though. These kids don't give a shit. Yeah. They care for 10 minutes, my guy. For 10 <laughs> minutes they care. After those 10 minutes they don't give a shit, man. I don't even I remember this tournament. I do don't remember this shit. You know what I mean? Like that's what that's what people yeah. need to understand and that's what I try to tell I try to tell them. Specifically my coach Frankie shout out Frankie over there. My my 19s. Right? He he he's, he's he's like all in it. I mean, he's all about it. You know what I mean? Like, ah, bro, like we got to work this. We got to work this. I'm like, dude, these are fucking four years old, dude. <laughs> They're four years old, dude. Chill the fuck out, bro. Like, it's not that serious. It really isn't that serious. You know what I mean? Like, to me, I'm like, dude, you're winning four on four games. It takes one really fucking good yeah. player, and you'll win every fucking He'll game. will take it over, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing to that. Like, right now, you just want these kids to fall in love with the grind. Mm-hmm. And I always say grind. They got to fall in love with the grind, bro. It's easy to love something that... It's easy to love a game that you're good at, right? But there's going to be a million kids that are really good at this game. Yeah. Do you love getting better at it? That's that's what I try to instill in these guys and these girls. Like, do you love this right here? When it is 100, because uh, well, we'll practice at 100 degrees. I don't give a shit because I'm out there too. 
Mm-hmm. We're going to be out here, bro. Do you love it so much so that you're not going to complain about how hot it is right now? No. Damn, like, dude. that's right. That's what you want to instill in kids, bro. No. I wish you were my coach in high school, man. <laughs> Fuck. Nah, man. I want to join the team now. <laughs> we. So, the, the thing is, like, in, in our high school, we never had a soccer team until our senior year. Where did you go? Anthony. Anthony. There's a high school in Anthony? I'm yeah. just kidding. No, go ahead. <laughs> it's like 300. <laughs> So we never, the school never had a soccer team until they just decided to do one my senior year. And uh, they, they're they like, well, who's going to be the coach? And it's like, well, I don't know. Nobody wanted, like all the other coaches were coaching other sports, right? And nobody wanted to take up a new sport. Yeah. So they got one of the math teachers. <laughs> and he was, he was like middle school math. And I think he taught freshmen. I don't know. He wasn't a coach. He was not a coach, man. <laughs> he was, he was a cool dude. Cool dude. But we fucking, we did whatever the fuck we wanted. Like, we pretty much ran the practice. The older kids were the ones that we, we would do it. We had um these two guys, Edwin and Marco, who had been, grown up playing soccer their whole life. And they were fucking good. They were the ones that would carry us. I was decent, you know. I was all right. I was a little lazy. um, And I was one of the older ones, so I had the advantage. Yeah. And the thing is, so in our school, it's so small. And nobody wanted to play soccer, like, 90% of our team was like freshmen and sophomores because they're the ones that wanted to play soccer. Mm. So I was probably like one of the only seniors. You joined for a little bit, right? Yeah, but I was playing other sports that I kind of... Yes. And so I got these guys to play just because, you know, they were athletes. Yeah. And I'm like, we need bigger kids. We need athletes. So him, um, Briseño, he was like one of our track stars, fucking fast. And I would just be like, just join, dude. We'll get you a jersey for like a game just because, <laughs> dude, we won no games zero games the entire season and they would just fucking dude they would put in their b team there they would put their jv up against us and still like whoop on us <laughs> Damn, it was uh, bad well you did go to anthony i don't think there's many athletes that came out of there right no it's small <laughs> not man. in one piece it's, <laughs> it's so small it's like i think at, at one point we had like 200 students at the school Shit. um and then our our class graduated like what was it 28 mm-hmm. dude I, I just just change the subject real quick about Anthony, dude, is it really that bad out there? Now, the reason why I ask is because, like, I know, I know, I go, I know coaches that coach out there. Mm-hmm. Shout out Lau, right? Mm-hmm. They're a great organ. Like I, those, those guys are super cool, super very, very um, approachable, and you know, I talk to them a lot. And one of the coaches, one time specifically, he's like, "Nah, man," he's like, "Do you know what, dude?" He's like, "I do this shit to keep these kids off the streets." Yeah, is it really that bad out there? To where it's like, I don't think it's that bad. I would. Well, it just depends on. on where you're at but as far as like la union where it's la u yeah that is a little bit mm-hmm. you know a, you know lower income yeah neighborhood um, and neighborhood stuff. okay you got um anthony new mexico is like right next door and that's a lot worse than you know yeah mm-hmm. and there's parts of anthony texas that i would say that you know there is you know some kids that probably yeah need that that yeah. guidance um but yeah, I mean, I I can see where where it can be, you know, just because it's such a low income community, it's not makes you know, sense. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, keeping kids off the street is good. Um, I would hope yeah. so. Guy. We, yeah, we, we we joke around a lot about it's because Anthony's divided to Texas, New Mexico, and we mm-hmm. make jokes about we shit on the New Mexico side <laughs> because it is like they don't have sidewalks and stuff like Bro, that. Oh, stop! <laughs> stop! <laughs> <laughs> So it is, it is, it is a little. They don't have fucking sidewalks out there, bro. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> they don't got no. That, and you would, you'd be surprised. Like, just you were in Texas, and then you go to New Mexico. It's literally like a street over, dude. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh fuck, <laughs> <laughs> sidewalks are gone. There's <laughs> stuff. <laughs> no, I'm... man, it's it's a big difference. It looks like it's like a little mi- like a mini Juarez, dude. Like, dude. you know how. Right here, you Yo, see. Shout over, out J Town, dog. J Town's the <laughs> shit, bro. You see over the border, and then you see like houses built on like the mountain. Like, I know that. Way, that's Anthony, New Mexico, dude. I, I wanted to do this <laughs> this bit. Where... Said, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have sidewalks over there, bro. <laughs> I, I had thought about like doing like little videos, like interviewing people around Anthony and be like, oh, what do you guys think about like um, if Trump wins the election that he's going to build a a wall dividing Anthony, Texas, and New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go around town and asking people to see what they thought. But. Oh, that'd be funny, dude. Yeah. You should. That'd be awesome. Oh, man, that's classic, though. Fucking sidewalks. <laughs> that's awesome. But so it, it, like, what are they right there? Horses and shit out there? Or what? <laughs> it, it's just, 
it's a, it, I don't know, man. That that community is just it's New Mexico, I guess. And New Mexico is like as it is, you know, they don't have a lot of money and they have a really big drug problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just like the low. It's like a very if Anthony's a low income community, like yeah. Anthony, New Mexico is like even fuck, worse. Even worse. Mm-hmm. Like if you go on that side of the street, oh, that's bad. Yeah, you don't right? go on that's- that side. Of the street. <laughs> <laughs> Block that shit off, dude. That's where we almost got shot, dude. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's yeah. terrible, dude. I didn't know it was that. I'm sorry. I just did it. I've never. I'm sure I've been there before, mm-hmm. but I probably didn't know I was there. Yeah. Right. It's one of those like, dude, where are we? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like yeah. Wet and Wild. You know where Wet and Wild is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where we always you're like Anthony Wet and Wild. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're there. I, Anthony Exit Zero. Exit yeah. Zero. No. <laughs> Yo, yeah. that's bad. I didn't know there was actually people that lived around <laughs> Wet and Wild. I thought that was just like an attraction. I know there was a grocery store by there, but I thought they just built it so they can, like, all the people who are going to Wet and Wild can go to that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's super so I used to work. I used to work at Wet and Bro, Wild. Uh, did you really? I was a lifeguard. Hell yeah. I was like 16, I think. Everybody that lived you got in mad Anthony play there, huh? Yeah. Oh, you loved it. Oh, you fucker. Go. So it's funny because they used to have the. <laughs> The supervisors would go to our high school and they would like set up a little table and just fill out your application. You <laughs> the, were hired like the right recruiting. down the spot, dude. <laughs> you didn't even have to swim? Well, you would have to go try it out, but that was but it. But did you, you swam though, didn't you? What do you mean? Did you actually, like, were you a swimmer? Like yeah, that was your yeah, shit? I could swim. Yeah, I could swim. I mean, I'm not like a soup. Like I'm not, I didn't used to compete. No? But... Uh... <laughs> just like doggy paddle? Or... <laughs> <laughs> nah, but my swimming was pretty good. I wouldn't compete and shit, but yeah. You were enough to save somebody? Yeah. You yeah. think you could do it? No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I remember, dude, one time I did go to fucking Went and Wild. And I almost fucking drowned. Because I didn't know how to swim yet. I think I was, you know, and it was like, oh, it's four feet. Yeah, I can touch the floor at four feet. But I didn't take into consideration that, the, you know, when you come down that fucking slide, that thing's going to come yeah. right back at yeah. you. So I, you know, I went in there and I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. And I remember Buddy did jump in and save me, man. And it was. It was a shout out to the lifeguards, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> shout out to the Wet Wild lifeguards. That's crazy, though, dude, because you got you got sixteen year olds working there, right? And you're basically trusting these fucking sixteen year olds to, yeah, you know, watch these kids, dude. <laughs> no. well, and, well, know, what was that? There was uh, early this year or last year that there was a little kid that drowned. At, oh, at that one swimming pool. At that swimming pool, <sighs> and the the mom was trying to blame it on the staff and the lifeguards, but yeah. She ended up being the one that was like being ne- negligent. Uh, yeah. yeah, she got arrested, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's terrible, though. That yeah. that was terrible, dude. That was. Well, when I was at Went Wild, we, um, we had this kid drown. Um, I wasn't working that side of the pool that day, but this kid drowned, and then you were uh, on the Texas side or the Mexico? No, side? no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was on. I was on. I was on break, and then I just heard the whistles go off. So I mean, somebody drowned. So. If you're on break, you gotta you know take off and go do go deal with that. So I take off and usually you know it's just some kid drowning. They get him out real quick and then he's good. Like, all right, fucking be careful. Yeah. But this kid was out like unconscious and Damn. they were doing CPR on him, dude. And uh, I remember like, cause they broke his ribs while they're doing CPR, yeah. and his stomach was just like filled with water, so you can see it. It looked like a waterbed. It just. <sighs> so he ended up coming back to life there, and then on the ambulance he ended up. Fucking no way! Yeah, yeah, you oh, know that time. sucks, dude. Yeah. Nah, see that's scary, bro. Yeah, that's scary, dude. That's why, dude. Fuck that. We'll go to these little fucking splash parks, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'll go ahead. You know, my my boys are my boys are very simple in that aspect. They don't. My my little one loves the pool, but yeah. Nah, I, he's floated up. You gotta teach him how to up. swim, dude. <sighs> dude, do you know how to swim? I know how to swim. Yeah. yeah. My wife doesn't know how to swim. Neither does mine. I laugh at her all the and I'm time. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, fuck around, get thrown in the pool. You know what I'm saying? Fuck around, get thrown in the yeah. pool. It's all fun and game. But no, no, I'm just kidding. No, but the, yeah, I know how to swim, but, you know, I learned the old fashioned way, dude. Yeah. You know, Story I really man. did. They just threw my shit. <laughs> my brother my did that to me when I was young. Yeah. <laughs> my sister ended up being the one, like, no, you got to teach him properly. And she would, like, you know, hold me and shit like that. Wait, I'm how like, would he I'm hold like, you? How would she hold you again? She would, like, you know, because I'm the youngest. They're, 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 they're older than me. But my brother, like, one of the first times, just fucking threw me in there. Figure it out. Yeah. Shit. No, yeah. But my I'm uncle alive. was the one that threw me, bro. My uncle threw me in there. And, I be, and he didn't even. He sat down, which was scary to me, right? Because I'm jumping out. And I look at him. And he's fucking sitting there with a. He had a Bud Light tall boy, man. It was about. And I remember him, too, man. Shout out my Tio Mando. He's a. 
he's a uh, he's the only Giants fan from El Paso that I know. Oh, right? sure. <laughs> But he's, uh, I remember him, I'm, and I say that because he was wearing a, uh, a New York Giants shirt when he threw me in there. He threw me in there, and he had a, uh, he had his tall boy, and he sat down, dude. He sat down and watched me struggle. <laughs> Damn, it did get kind of nippy. Started getting goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah, I got cold, dude. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I was trying to talk, and I was like kind of shivering. I noticed you were getting closer to me, and I'm oh, like, nah, dude, I'm not, I'm not going to cuddle you. What do you fuck off. Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Throw away your fucking <laughs> soiled. He found my little babies, dude. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> oh man. All right. So you said you said you got a, uh, you know, a daily job. But what do you what do you do for? for I'm a, a I'm a manager at a at a body shop. Okay. Yeah. Texas Auto Collision, man. Oh nice. Um, it's a you know it's chilling, man. I I enjoy it. It's a. Cause I did it, you know. I was doing the whole. I'm staying at home and I ain't doing shit, mm-hmm. you know. Cause uh, I earn, I earn a living without, you know, just by breathing, right? With my, uh, with my, you know, the army stuff or whatever. But mm-hmm. I couldn't do it, man. You, you know, stay I busy. Was going crazy, dude. Yeah, I was. I play a lot of video games. You know, that's <laughs> when I got really good at FIFA. You know, I mean, I was ready. I was playing very competitively, but it was like one of those things that I'm like, all right. So I'm just sitting around waiting for practice. So it was like. I got to do something. And I, you know, and I started, I went, you know, I went and started doing, um, you know, uh, business insurance. I was doing business insurance, corporate insurance. Um, mm-hmm. I was doing all that, but that was super stressful, dude. I was always stressed. It was always deadlines to me. And I was like, dude, I can't do this. Yeah. Because at that point, you know, the club was blowing up. So it was like, okay, like I can't do both. Because running the club is tough, right? A lot of people don't see what going, what goes on after. Right? Like, you as a parent, like, you just got to show up, right place, right time, right uniform. That's all you got to take care of. You yeah. Know? You know what I'm saying? Everything else that's that goes into it, I take care of it. Like, I take care of so much. I take care of so much daily. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always on my phone. I'm always taking care of something. I'm always putting out a fire somewhere. But, yeah. So, it was like, I couldn't do that and this. So, then... It was an opportunity. Uh, one, a friend of mine was like, "Hey, man, I need someone. In, I need someone in the shop I can trust, and you know, um, that knows that side of business or whatever, like that side of the insurance game, whatever." So I was like, mm-hmm. "I was like, match my pay, my guy, and I'm there. I'm down." And sure enough, dude, he matched my pay. So I was like, "Shit, all right, but fuck yeah." So it was, um, yeah. So now it's you know it's very, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun because it's um, I get to, I get to really you know. See how the small, you know, this, you know, a small business operates, Mm -hmm. you know, and how you really do live, you know, you know, job to job, dude. Like it's, Mm -hmm. you know, I see because, you know, um, it's me and him usually in the office. It's just me and him in the office. Obviously, you know, the dude, the guys are all in the, you know, the shop and they're all doing their their thing or whatever. But he, you know, he bounces things off of me all the time. It's like, yo, what about this? We got to get better at this. We got to do this better. We got to do this better. He's always like this, bro. And he reminds me of me. With the club thing, I'm always like, dude, fuck, you know what I mean. But he's taking care of it, and you know, it's a whole different, it's a whole different, uh, you know, I guess, asp- or a whole different, you know, environment. Obviously, right? It's like mm-hmm. you know, you're doing the collision business, right? It's like you can't cause collisions. You know what I mean? Like it's like fuck. Yeah. But well, the good thing is it's in El Paso, and there's a lot of shitty drivers. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea how many. Somebody, we have so many repeated customers, dude. It is crazy to it's me. It's like you dumb fuck. You're I'm here. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, bro, you're back. I'm like, what happened now? Like, nah, man, they hit me this time. I'm like, this time, guy. What about the other three, bro? Like, but nah, dude, it's crazy. But you know what else I learned, dude? Is yo, some of these people are rude. People are very rude. Yeah. You know, and and I take pride in, dude. I'm approachable. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I have a really, you know, I come off a certain way, but it's like, I'm very approachable, dude. Yeah. Like, I'll have a great car. I, I'm great to have a conversation with. But a lot of the times, like, people can be really mean, like, for no reason. Like, mm-hmm. it's not going to do anything. Like, it's not going to change the fact that, you know, you're, uh, like, say, for example, just, just just for sake of argument, it's like, say, we're, you know, you come to me, it's like, yo, you, I, someone hit me, my fender's fucked up, can you fix it? You know, okay, bet, yeah, we can fix it. We'll fix it, we'll paint it, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of the times, you know, we can't age paint. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, if you bring me a 1992 Geo Metro, my guy, <laughs> yeah. and it's yellow, right? A really, you know, 
we're going to get the color code or whatever, right? It's yellow, bet. We're going to get the original yellow. But it's impossible for me to age this paint, yeah. you know, the 30 years that, it, that, that that yellow paint that you have right now is. But people will be very rude and, you know, be to an extent where it's like, dude, you, like, dude we can't, what do you want me to do? Like, you haven't painted your car in 30 years. It's like, that <laughs> entitlement, you know, that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Dude, I see is, that, dude. Like, I work retail at a store. Some people come in, like, it's a return shoes, right? We have a return policy where it's got to be in the condition that you purchased yeah. it, right? They fucking come in here with, like, no receipt. Be like, I bought these last week. They're like, bitch, no, you didn't. These fuckers have been. I don't know what the fuck you were doing, man. And it's like, well, I want to return them. Like, it, your product is, like, and I'm like, nah, it's not our product. It's like, you're fucking nasty-ass people. Like, you know, or shit like that. Or just... Not to knock on anybody returning things, right? Because my wife is notorious, bro. She's <laughs> she's uh, she's a return specialist. That's what yeah. I call her. And she's like the Deion Sanders of Target <laughs> and Ross. You know what I mean? Like that's her thing. She's a return specialist. Now. Yeah. But I can see that though, yeah. and I'm sure they talk to you a certain way. They do. They make you. They belittle you. Mm-hmm. And but it's like, dude, if, if you know how you know the, the the conversation and the results would be extremely different if they approached you like, hey, my guy, listen. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I went ahead and I scuffed these things up. I went to J-Town. You know, I went to Anthony. They don't have sidewalks. There. <laughs> so, you know, my shoes are fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you can be like, ah, oh, damn, bro. Like, shit, I know. Yeah. You know, I'm I, from there or some <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But it's like, but they know. They talk to you a certain way, mm-hmm. expecting results. But it's like, dude, like, no, fuck uh, you. Like, people, people are pieces of shit, man. Like, they are. And that's um, the worst, too. Yeah. For and, no reason. And yet, like not too long ago, also I had one customer who it was the total opposite. I got there and I hate being on cashier, dude. I hate being on register, just standing on one spot, you know, kind of just doing the same thing over yeah. and over. I gotta be moving. I gotta be doing stuff. So when I jump on register, I'm, it's usually just to like clear the line or whatever. But I jumped on and I'm like, fuck, here we go, I'm cashier. <laughs> but like the first customer I got, it was this lady and she was like, how's your day going? And I'm like, fuck like she asked me how my day's going like nobody ever does <laughs> you, that <laughs> i'm <what>? seen <laughs> and that made a difference in my day yeah. like i felt yeah. like you know we started talking we had a nice little conversation and she left and i was like man i, I wish people were like that like but uh, some pe- people don't even fucking look at you in the eye they're just like give me my shit yeah you know? yeah like if you're like if you're like if you're less yeah like but it but it's like no and it and and it goes it's just speaks volumes about you know the society that we have dude i wanted you know when when, when my cousin hit me up about this podcast mm-hmm. um it was interesting because i was trying to think of topics to talk about mm-hmm. right and this is a clever one and 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 it's weird right but it's, it's not weird right it's odd but it was just my thought process was like damn like that's crazy but so i don't know if you remember it was yesterday right yesterday when it was super bad outside yeah mm-hmm. the wind was terrible it was like dude you couldn't see from here you know 30 feet in front of you because especially out here with all the dirt you know the dirt was everywhere it was crazy bro it was crazy and i'm driving i'm driving home from work and um there's this uh i'm driving and now run here there's there's pebble hills is this way and then there's sun like there's like a bunch of schools around here and i'm driving dude and there's a girl there's a little girl no bigger than you know no not no older than the girls that you practice with today Mm -hmm. and she's walking home dude in this fucking weather Right. And in my mind, my, my, you know, my gut, my, you know, my, the human in me is like, this little girl should not be fucking walking right now. Mm -hmm. Like I should be like, Hey mommy, do you want to ride? Like I can give you a ride to your house. Like if you're walking home, you don't live far. Mm -hmm. Right. But society tells us do not pick up that little girl. Mm -hmm. If someone sees you pick up that little girl, you're fucked. No matter what story you have you're fucked if you picked up that little girl yeah but the human in me the human in me is like dude like you let that little girl walk home knowing damn well how shitty it is outside yeah does that make sense like dude how how weird of a of a of a psyche is that like how how fucked up is that yeah you know, and I've, I've 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 felt that so i've seen kids you know where i'm like fuck dude why are they walking man it's a little ass kid like he should not be walking but yeah, I'm like, nah. Is it really worth me fucking pulling over and like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. And then I don't know. I, I don't know what kind of you know life this kid lives. I don't want him to be like, hey, this fucking guy offered me trying like, to pick me up. Yeah, and, like, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and it's just yeah. like, 
I've seen it too. Man, I even, I even, sometimes, even when I'm driving my patrol car, I'm like, it should be okay for me as a fucking police officer to be like, hey, you need a ride, dude? Like, you're, you're a ride. But I'm yeah. like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because you never, you just, people yeah, are going to be, no, you know, yeah, and no, you're everybody's right. got a phone and they're like, oh, look at this motherfucker. This dude's picking up this little up. girl. Yeah. Like, in pedo. Dude, that, that's <laughs> trash though. Isn't yeah. that trash? Like, to me, to me, to me, just like looking, looking at the bigger picture, that's a shit society. To me. Yeah. For me, that's a shit society when I cannot be, do the human nice thing and pick up this little girl. Take her down, you know, two blocks. You know what I mean? Like, instead of her walking with the sand in her face, like, I'm like, bro, like, that's terrible. Like, to me, and especially with me, because I relate to that, you know, to that little girl, because I have, I coach little girls. I love every single one of my players. I love every single one of my players, right? And now, see, like, then here's a trick, another tricky thing, too, that I had to have a conversation with a couple of my older girls. Because I'm, you know, a couple of these girls, I've, dude, I've watched them grow. I've watched them grow to when they were, you know, six years old. Now they're, you know. 12 years old, whatever, you know, 11 years old, 12 years old, you know, and I'm like, listen, mommy, like, we can't hug the way, you know, we can't hug anymore. Like, I can't hug you. Yeah. Like, I can hug the little ones. Like, come here, mommy. Oh, my God. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we did it. But it's like some of these, you know, some of these older ones, I'm like, mommy, like, let's, let, let's work a handshake out. Yeah. Let's get a handshake down. Why? Be, not because, <laughs> but then to me, it's like, dude, my, my players love me. You know, they love me just as much. So it's like, they want to hug me sometimes, but I don't feel comfortable. Yeah, because I know, I know now. I know my parents. You know, the parents in my club are like, "Dude, that's Coach Jay." Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, they, they they won't say nothing about it. But somebody looking in sees me hug one of my players. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then they they might think of it wrong, and they might label it something. So then, and to me, again, that's disheartening to me. Mm -hmm. To me, it's just it's just it's a shitty environment that we've created. To where, I mean, I mean, and not to, not to twist my own words around and stuff, whatever, right? But there are, I mean, because there, there are some bad bad fucking dudes out here. Yeah. Right. That fucking deserve to, you know. Yeah. Like, fucking on the on the subject, like, buddy. I, it ended up being false, right? But the the one that with the little girl in the daycare. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. With a little girl, like like um, accused buddy of of touching the baby or whatever. The one that the, like they were like protesting the daycare. Yeah, and yeah, everything. yeah, yeah. Do you remember yeah. that one? Yeah, yeah. Bro, to me, excuse me, and and I say I said I told my wife this. I said. If it was my little girl, dude, I'm burning the bitch down. Yeah. I'm locking that whole fucking daycare down. I'm going to lock the owners in there with me, and you're going to tell me what the fuck happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Because I'm like, no, we're not playing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to put no fucking camera phone up. No, my guy. Yeah. I'm going to call three motherfuckers. I'm going to call them, and we're going to take care of this shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, That's the way that would go down. And that's just me. But nonetheless, the fact that I can't be comfortable enough right, to hug these little girls who... I've, who I look as as my daughters as or I mean that's too far fetched right but mm -hmm. I've I've seen them grow right? they're, they're love part them of your that. community they're yeah, like, like your like yeah. that's the, that, that those are my girls man and it's like I gotta work you know let's work some handshakes out bro <laughs> you know what I'm saying like yeah, and, and it's like uh, and it's 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 just heartbreaking for me man that that we've gotten to this point yeah and and I had um, maybe about a month ago I had this guy I was at the station and then. Um, I think I was doing like a report or something, and then so I somebody knocks on the door. I go outside. It's this dude, and he just looks scared, dude. And I'm like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "Hey, man, can I talk to you real quick?" And I'm like, "Yeah, what's up, man?" He's like, "Hey, so he's like, I'm the coach of a softball team. He's like, I coach girls, blah blah. You know, he's telling me like, I've been coaching these girls forever. He's like, and I started having issues with one of the parents, um, because of playing time and this and that. And he's like." Because I wasn't letting her play, so he got upset, and now he's trying to say that I'm too comfortable with all the little girls, and that I touch these girls, that I like when I hug them, I do it like for my own. So he's that 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 one parent started telling like all the other parents like, oh, he he makes my daughter feel no. uncomfortable when he hugs her, and and he was like, oh, that's terrible. He's like, dude, I don't know what the fuck to do. He's like, I just wanted to come and tell you guys before, and I'm like, I mean, at this point, I can't really do anything, dude, because it's not till you know mm -hmm. he comes to us, and he's like. This guy's being inappropriate with my daughter. Then at but that here's point, the thing, though. But but we, we, you know, our society's built on innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. My guy, you get accused of that. If I get accused of some shit like that, dude, I'm done. Yeah. It's a wrap. I yeah. don't get even if it's not true. Yeah. Just the accusation alone ruins me, like as as in a profession, just like yeah. him. If if he were to say that shit, he's never coaching another team. And that, and that's what his thing was too. He was like, dude, like this is what I do. I coach now. He's like, now I'm having trouble. Like, none, some of these girls don't want to, you know, the parents don't want to bring them back. Like, 
I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, and, and then he's going on like Facebook on like the softball page that I guess is like a community softball mm-hmm. page. And he's like, this coach, this coach is no. doing. So he's like, fuck. Like, oh man, that's so, tox, dude. Well, that's, that's, I mean, that's basically cancel culture, right? Yeah. Like you get, you get canceled and you're, you're fucking done. Dude, that's it. But it's so shitty though. That's mm-hmm. so shitty, bro. That's a shit move, man. But you know what? In that same breath though, I think. So long as you don't put yourself in a predicament where yeah. someone can make assumptions, mm-hmm. right? Like, don't, like, you know, I, I'll i never, ever in, you know, in the, ever be alone with one of my players. Never. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Never. It's like, dude, everything is a team-oriented thing. Yeah. Parents are always there. Granted, I do tell the parents to get a fuck away sometimes. Like, dude, <laughs> go fucking sit over there, bro. Like, I just, when they're right here, bro, I hate it when they're, like, right here. I'm like, bro, go the fuck over there. Like, don't fucking be right here. But yeah, I think that's the big, I think the only solution is to always be Damn. out in the open. Like, no, dude, you, you you'll never see me, you know what I'm saying? Like by myself somewhere. Like, no, fucking never. Like, not even with even the boys either. Like, yeah. you're never gonna see me alone with them. Like, yeah. it's always like, dude, everyone can see everything I'm doing, dude. But it's gotten to the point now, right? Where sometimes whenever I'm trying to show the girls specifically, right? We're back to the back to the point of you know the question about the difference. Mm-hmm. With the dudes, I'm fucking, I'm pushing these fuckers around and I'm throwing them on the floor. I'm grabbing them and I'm throwing them. The girls, dude, I can't. So, like, if I'm trying to show them how to be physical, I'm like, shit. Like, I don't, I'll ask, you know, one of the moms, yeah. I'll be like, hey, hey, come here real quick. Like, just stand here, like, show them this or whatever. Like, because I don't want my hands to slip or yeah. I don't want some shit to be like, dude, that's weird. Like, no, I'm like, mommy, just come do it. Like, mm-hmm. and not to make it weird, but it's just like, I just want to cover my ass. Dude, yeah. Because at yeah. the end of the day, like, this is what I want. And I want my girls to be comfortable with me. You know, I want my parents to be comfortable with me. Like, that's just the way I am. You know what I'm saying? But, nah, man, it's crazy. Like, this culture is is fucking... It is, man. Like, we've... I've, I keep saying it. I, we just keep getting softer and softer. And it's just... I don't know. We're just... The direction that we're going in, it's it's different. I, I compare a lot to Mexico because I... I mean, my parents are from over there. And I still go every now and then and i see it man like even a simple like when when you're walking the streets down in mexico like you're looking at people they're saying hi to you you're saying hi good day good morning you know Mm -hmm. like here you walk nobody says like hi to you or something like it's everybody like they're doing their own thing yeah and there's that it's like that like we said like that sense of community is not there and i was thinking about like what you were saying you know picking up someone if you're walking down the street i think in 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 societies like that, it it's kind of normal, you know, because especially if you if you're in a community where everybody knows each other, like yeah, sure, like oh, I got a ride from so and so, or you know, people do that a lot, and it it's just it's just where we are. It's America. It's yeah, it's, it's different. It's shitty, man. Yeah, and especially you know, and here in El Paso, it's a melting pot now, where it's mm-hmm. just like, dude, we got people from everywhere. Yeah, like yeah. Fort Bliss is getting huge. Where the the bigger Fort Bliss gets, gets like, you know. Obviously, El Paso gets bigger, mm-hmm. and we get people from different cultures and different belief systems. Yeah, yeah. right. That's why you see like things happen that usually don't aren't aren't happening, dude. But I guarantee, like, oh, buddy, that you know that did fucking shot shoot so and so. Well, he's not. His family's not from El Paso. His family's probably from somewhere you know somewhere yeah. else, and they just came here, brought that same hood and and you know that that fucking gang mentality or whatever right like because mm-hmm. back in the day dude i mean was you remember you you grew up in the same you know my molejo apartments yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying down in the valley baby you know what i'm saying and and i'm and you know our uncles they were you know they were in gangs and shit but ain't nobody fucking out here shooting people bro yeah hey, motherfucker, we're gonna throw down my guy like mm-hmm. I, I saw plenty of fights bro you know what i mean i i we, we you know we had a fight club i have an uncle my uncle servando he would uh we laugh about it every time we get together because he used to make me fight my friends, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was fucking five, six years old and he's like, hey, he was talking shit. You know what I mean? Like, he's mar- you know, échatelo, Jose, échatelo, Joey. And I was like, oh, okay, bet. I'm fucking fighting my best friends and shit. You know what I mean? But but that's all it was back then, man. That's mm. all it was. It's like, dude, we fucking throw down. Fuck it. Mm. Now, you can't fucking fight nobody, bro. Nah. There is no fighting, bro, because you never fucking know. You get shot. It's what's going to happen. Dudes out here weak as shit. Yeah. I didn't want to shoot people, bro. Like, and that's the scary part. That's why I stay my ass home. Yep. I don't. You don't see me out there, no, bro. Yeah, no, I don't go out either. It's crazy, man. You see it, like, 
And it's every night. Every night there's something I learned my lesson. fucking going on. Every <laughs> night, dude. Hell and, no. And that's what I, I tell my wife that too. Like, dude, after a certain time at night, like, we're not going anywhere. Like, we're mm-hmm. we're home. We want to make sure you're home by that time because there's motherfuckers driving crazy. There's motherfuckers shooting places. Oh, yeah. There's, it's bad. And I see it firsthand, dude. I see this shit every day, right, when I'm working. Oh, yeah. And I'm no like, shit. fuck no. Like, <laughs> we're not Hell going no, out, dude. Bro. I stay within, like, a 10-mile radius, I think, where it's like, bet, like, where are we going? Okay. And we'll end up at somebody's house, right? We'll go to somebody's house and we'll have drinks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's like, dude, we'll be home in a minute. Literally yeah. one minute. We'll be home. Yeah. Like, everyone in this neighborhood, like, that's where we go. I won't ever go into, like, go in there. Though there's no fucking way, bro. There's no fucking way. For what? I'm trying to get home. But, yeah. nah, man. El Paso's only getting bigger, bro. It's only going to get worse. It is. And you think about, like, all the immigrants that are coming in. And, you know, some of them go, they stay, whatever. A you lot know, of them are staying. It's, it's, a lot it's of changing. Them are, yeah. I, see, I see it, you know, because, like I said, I, I work at a store. I see people every day. Like, mm-hmm. I see the change within the last couple of years of people coming in and shopping and stuff. It's Dude, I'll tell you what. A lot of new faces. You know, I work was I work downtown, mm-hmm. right? Like our shop is downtown, like Texas and Cotton, bro. For our collision needs, Texas Auto Collision. There you <laughs> Texas go. and Cotton, fifteen nineteen. <laughs> anyway, so I work down there, bro. And there's a around the corner. There's a uh, what is it? Um, where they house where they house um, like homeless people. What is it like? A, uh, um, like a homeless shelter? It's like a homeless shelter, but it's not really a homeless shelter <sighs> because a lot of the immigrants are there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like a, it's a mission thing. It's like it's a, someone with the, with the, they have a barbecue place there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I forget that. But name. anyway, but yeah. yeah, right. So, but I see a lot of these immigrants walking the streets. Now, this strictly on what I see, okay, what I, what I literally see every day. Now, I'm not saying this is, this is a factual thing, but this is just what I see. Dude, a lot of them are homosexuals, bro. There's a lot of gay people walking around the streets downtown. Damn. Yeah. And they're immigrants. I swear. And they'll... And they'll be hit it up. Nah, I need, no. I, I, for a while there, you know. Um, no, I swear. And I'm not kidding, dude. Like, they'll be walking. And you can... Just, they have that strut to them. You know what I'm talking about? Like, when he walked, when he walked in right now? Yeah, you know yeah, that yeah. strut? He's all zesty. Yeah, bro. They'll have that strut. And I'm like, damn, bro. Like, to me, it's like, okay. So, you're... So, what are they? So, they're refugees, right? Is what they are? Are they I, refugees? I, I think so. I yeah, they they, they come in seeking asylum. Right, they're depressed, right? They're like they're 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 yeah. they're, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're wherever Venezuela. They're Venezuela, seeking Venezuela, asylum. They're like, from different mm-hmm. Venezuela, fucking like just like Southern America, though, yeah. right? So yeah. are they being oppressed because my thing again? This is just my thing. What I see. So to me, I'm like, dude, they're being oppressed because they're homosexual. Could be yeah. just just based on the just on the numbers that I've seen. Yeah, I'm not saying that it's true, my guy. I'm not in any way saying that all everybody, everybody fucking all immigrants are. No, in no way, shape, or form am I saying that. Don't but let Trump I, hear you, bro, because he's gonna be like, they're sending their homosexuals and <laughs> they're you know? sending them here. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with yeah. it because I have some. I've known some great people that are homosexual, right? Then. But some of these dudes, bro. <laughs> like they, they there's just no shame out here. You know what I'm saying? Like no shame, bro. Like it's like not that there's nothing to be shameful about, but it's like yo, chill, dog, <laughs> chill. Let's just go ahead and hang out a little bit. Like yeah. let's just go ahead and tone it down. All right? What do you need? Nah, but you size. I'm like yo, listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like listen. I'm like bro. Like do you need a job? <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends what kind of job. No, dude, and no show. <laughs> and here's one thing. And here's one thing that 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 I kind of um, I laugh at myself about. Because so they they they're, they're provided clothes mm-hmm. when they get here. These clothes don't fit. <laughs> I just thought like, yo, buddy, like you picked the tightest fucking pants <laughs> to fucking wear, bro. Like what? <laughs> and the shirts are like, you know, fucking yeah. crop tops. I'm like, yo, my guy, are you serious right you, now? You ever watch a scary movie? Or, yeah. Or he's like, does yeah, this yeah. shit make me look this gay? Me look gay. <laughs> that dude, this, and they'll show up. But then I'm like, yo, what the? F-? I'm like, yo, like. Why are they, you know, why are they, all of them, it's like a group of them will show up and mm-hmm. I seem, you know, they can trim our, you know, trim the, the weeds and all that stuff. And, mm-hmm. But they're all like, again, like very, and I'm like, yo, what the hell? <laughs> and uh, they'll leave and, um, you know, I asked one of the guys that works here, I'm like, hey, I was like, pues que, pues, los viste a todos? And then that's yeah, so when he told me, he goes, no, nah, dude, like they give them clothes, 
the clothes doesn't always fit. Yeah. Like they gotta just wear whatever they give them because a lot of they, they come with the clothes on their backs, mm-hmm. and they that that clothes has been you know through miles and miles of dirt and mud and yeah. So I'm like shit, bro. Now nah, I feel like a dick. I'm like damn, here I am <laughs> laughing at buddy for for having tight pants with no pockets on, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Got I no back like, pockets. They got no back pockets on. Assless chaps. <laughs> Hell yeah, nah, dude! But now I feel bad. No, I did feel bad for a minute there, but no, I've, I have noticed that though, man. And you know, you as a cop, do you? Um, I have a friend who is a cop as well. And one thing he told me before when I first asked him I was like, "How is it, bro?" Like, he goes, "Nah, well, you see the real El Paso. That's what he told me. Say, so you'll see, you see the real El Paso. Yeah, do you see some crazy shit?" Yeah. yeah, yeah, like yeah, shit like, that you're like you were like a regular like me. I wouldn't see unless mm-hmm. I was in that patrol car with you. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it's. You don't see like a lot of the shit, man. A lot of the shit, like ninety percent of it doesn't get reported. Ninety, like ninety eight percent of it doesn't get reported. No way. And you just like. It's so we crazy, just get the man. hardcore shit, right? Yeah, you'll like get the, like the, the, the news. of yeah, hardcore shit comes out. You'll get like but the big stuff. Uh, you stop a lot of the hardcore shit. Yeah, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Like before it gets to the hardcore, let me report this shit. You kind of, you stop it at some point. Yeah, there, like there's there's just a lot of stuff, man, that doesn't get reported, and um. I'll give you guys an example of what something I didn't get reported. Um, we had gotten called out, so it wasn't it wasn't even my district, but I was I just so happened to be in that area because I think I was I don't know I think I was gonna get some food. So I'm the closest unit to that, right? And they're like, "Hey, there's a there's a reporter calling about you know there's this kid he saw a kid with a rifle, you know, and he's right and he's right next to the school, he's pointing at the school and he's you know he's doing that shit." I'm like. Oh fuck! And I'm like, well, so they they tell me where it's at, and it's literally like me, like not even a mile from where I'm at. I'm like, oh fuck. Um, so everybody hears it right. Everybody just starts, oh shit, we're around, we're around. Yeah. Show up. I get there. I see the guy because the guy that reported it was he was a little bit down the street. And I'm like, where's he at? He's like, he's down there underneath this water tower. Like he's pointing a gun at. He's got this rifle. He's pointing it at the fucking at the school, and you know this and that. And I'm like, oh fuck. So yeah, I mean, I. I I pull up, dude, fucking draw my fucking weapon. And yeah, he has a fucking rifle. And I'm like, oh, no, does he really? Yeah. Oh, so I'm shit. like, oh, shit. So I'm like, fucking put it down. And, you know, and, and I'm just fucking letting him know, like, put that yeah. shit down. And yeah, finally, fucking, you know, he puts it down. He, I have him drop on the floor. I go and fucking just, you know, I yeah, detain him. Yeah, the whole thing, yeah. And ends up being that the fucking rifle he's holding is a BB gun, right? And I'm, we're like, what the fuck? Like, what are you doing, dude? Oh, no, I just came out here. And I'm like, well, why are you walking around Yeah, with a rifle next to a school pointing at the school? Like, what the fuck? But that shit that, like, you, you never heard no, about. In that, no, mm-hmm. in that moment, though, that's yeah. scary as fuck. Yeah, yeah. No, like, yeah. Dude, it was scary like, as shit. Especially I was like, now. Cause I was like, this motherfucker's yeah. got a rifle. Like, we're. No, that's scary, bro. And, Especially, dude, you, like, you as a cop, you pull up and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. What the fuck am I supposed to do? And <laughs> was how crazy. old was this kid? Wait, hold on. How old was the kid? He was 16, 17. Okay. So he so, was, he had some size to him. Yeah. Dude. Okay. And, and it was crazy because I'm, I'm coming up the street and I'm like, I don't see anybody like coming behind me. I'm like, fuck. And I'm looking at my river mirror and I see units like, because I, I, I turned on one street and I see units and they turned the other way and I'm like, where the fuck are they going? <laughs> and then, it, like, it was one unit turned one way, and then the, the rest started following them. And I'm like, where the fuck are they going? So I show up, <laughs> I get out of my myself. I'm like waiting. Like, no where the, backup. Where the no fuck is everybody? Up. Shit. And my boy later on, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? He was like, I turned the wrong way, dog, and everybody followed me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you. <laughs> so you're lucky that was a fucking BB I'm gun. Like, shit, shit, bro. <laughs> dude, I, but, was, I don't know where the fuck I was going. So. Yeah, I mean, that shit doesn't come out in the news. That shit didn't come out anywhere. Was it right? out there? Was it like, wh- where do you patrol? This was in, this was off of East Lake, like East Lake. Oh, and, no way. Over yeah, here. Yeah, it's like, oh, right, shit. So there was sidewalks. Yeah. Street signs. <laughs> okay. And there was cars and everything. <laughs> I, I thought, I was like, for sure, we're going to be on fucking Fit Fam, dude. Like, yeah. No, nothing came out. You know, it, it doesn't get reported. You know, it's just things like that that don't. That don't even make it. That don't make it. Yeah. Um, well, see, and that's a successful story, though. I yeah. mean, that's a. You know why, though? I think because it, it ended in a positive note. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I read somewhere that news reports anything that's going to get a negative reaction because that yeah. a negative reaction gives more, what is it? More like, attention, it more gets, views. Yeah. 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 It, we, so, like, we kind of talked about it a little bit where 
one of our episodes we're talking about the same thing where like a lot of these people influencers or whatever they do negative shit yeah. to get those clickbaits you know and trash that's, that's what it is man people are attracted to that nah you gotta be positive out here man mm-hmm. that's what it man and listen and this is just a word of this is for all your viewers out there um dude here's the way you, here's the way you gotta you gotta take things you gotta take everything with a grain of salt right like mm-hmm. you cannot control anybody's action you can only control your reactions right now if you're always looking at things in a positive light your reaction will be positive no yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know, a, a person can do whatever the fuck they want, right? It's the way you respond that's going to make the difference, right? So if we do as a society, if we just come together, well, you know, we just say one day, like, fuck it, bro. Like, I'm not going to let shit phase me. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to always be, I'm going to kill people, whatever, with positivity. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, and could you imagine the, the, the progress we'll make as a community if everyone just, like, Accepted the fact that, dude, I have no control over you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't do shit. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to fucking do. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let it phase me. That's the way I am, bro. Like, I don't give a shit. Because this is doing what I do. I've learned, dude, people will smile in your face, shake your hand, and go talk the most shit behind your back. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've grown so much in this community now that I know everything, bro. I know everything, my guy. Like, like, like I, I have people who I like, I'll hit them, I'll call them randomly. I'll be like, yo, I just want to tell somebody this, this, this is going to happen in the next year with so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. Just, I just want to throw it out there just so I know, just so somebody knows when it happens, I can say I told you so. It's like and placing I, some bets and shit. Yeah, dude, and, and it'll happen. Those, these things will happen. Why? Because people are so like, I'm, I can just tell, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm just like, bro, stop. And, but I've gotten to that point where it's like, I'm going to shake your hand every single time. I'm going to say hi to you every single time. I'm going to laugh with you. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. But is it phasing me any? Absolutely fucking not. It ain't going to change my perspective on things. I'm going to do my shit. I'm going to do my own thing over here. And that's why when I didn't know there was so much drama in this, the youth soccer community until I got girl teams. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was so much drama until I got girl team, bro. I swear to God, bro. I thought it was just like, yo, everybody cool. I bet money, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Right, let's work. Like, yo, a good game, bro. Good shit. No. It's not, it is it's the opposite of that. Like, I, and now that I know, like, this shit that, that was being said, right? Like, it, and it's, and it's kind of hurtful, to be honest with you. Like, to, to, it, it hurt me to a certain extent to where it's like, dude, that's fucked up, bro. Like, why would you say that? Mm-hmm. Or why would you, like, why would you feel entitled or feel the need to speak about me in that way, right, to other people? What did I do to you? I did nothing to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't, because I'm not here for anything. I'm not here for anything but the kids, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you scroll through my shit, if you scroll through my through my team shit, I think you'll find one picture of me with the squad. Yeah. Like, you won't see any pictures of me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, this right here is like, I keep one trophy that I've never won before. Right? That's what I do. And ask me where I, these are all dusty. You know why? Because they, they just sit in my, they sit in my son's room. When I first started, I saw I was like I was that guy. I was that guy. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I won this shit. Oh, I tried to collect them, whatever. And I was like, this is stupid. I said, why? Now I give them out after every single time I win a trophy. Unless I already, unless I don't have it, I'll give it out. Mm-hmm. I'll give it out to somebody. Whose turn is it? Okay, your turn. Here you go. Like I don't fucking need it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it. But it's it, it got to the point where people like the reason why I say that is because again I do my own thing. I was doing my own thing forever, bro. I've been doing my own thing for so long now that I was like so oblivious to everything else. I was so oblivious to what everybody was saying. Right. And that's what resulted in the success that I was able to have. That I didn't let anybody else's shit, anybody else's shit going on. It didn't phase me whatsoever, bro. I just kept doing, I just kept pushing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so if we come together and be like, dude, fuck everybody else, dude, keep pushing, bro. You got to go keep pushing. The shit's going to happen, bro. It's going to go through. Yeah. So long as you stay, you stay level-headed and you keep moving in the right direction and you surround yourself with like-minded individuals, you're going to succeed. It's not, a, it's, not, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, you know, transitioning into this where it's like, so now what I'm doing is um, I'm combining with 
this other team, it was uh, Phoenix FC is what they were called. And um, they have, they had like, you know, the best, you know, one of the best 2011 squads, nasty. And then the 14th, nasty, right on the boys' side. And then they had, they brought girls also, a girl, they got girl teams. And so I put me, it's like, dude, if, if I keep saying I'm, I'm here for the kids, this was an opportunity that will result in so, so many amazing things for everybody. You know what I'm saying? We're bringing two of the biggest clubs in the city mm-hmm. that used to fuck. Because I, you know, my parents, there's, there's parents in my club who can't stand those parents over there. <laughs> there really are. Like, yo, what? I'm like, dude, listen. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, listen, there's a, there's a method to the madness. There's a reason why we're doing it. And we came together now, right? And that's why, you know, Iron Knights, Iron Knights and Phoenix. So now we're Prime FC, right? After this season, we're going to move forward with Prime FC. And that's strictly because, again, you know, to be, to, you know, we're trying to do things that all these big clubs assume, like, you know, they claim to, to be all about, right? So then now it's like, no, guess what? Like, dude, like, no, we have something, you know, a family oriented fucking club, not one that's built on, oh, I'm trying to get as much money as possible. The only way for me to succeed is to charge you this X amount of money, you know, oh, if, and if you don't join our club, then you're not going to succeed. Your child will not be looked at. Your child will not get scouted when they're seven. You know what I mean? Like that we're trying to be the alternative to that, right? That's what that's what our goal is. Our goal is to when the time comes for Tadeo to be like, yo, my guy, you know, dude, there's there's nowhere else to go. Why would you want to go anywhere else? Dude, I'm giving we're gonna give you the big club, all those opportunities that they promise you, like we're actually gonna provide them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we're gonna play in those same tournaments, those same leagues, those same national leagues that they say, like, oh, we're the only ones that do this. We're the ones that fuck out of my face. You know what I mean? Like, bro, stop. Like, dude, don't even know who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, you haven't won shit in how long? And all of a sudden, you're the fucking... Get the fuck out of my face, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, get the fuck out of my face. Ain't, 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 there's no sustainability with anyone. The only way you're going to win is if you bring my players in. That's the only yeah. way you're going to win is if you pull my players. But you can't. So you can't pull my players, so you go pull that team's players. That team's players. That team's players. That team's players. That's the only way you're going to stay relevant, my guy. So now, long story short, set a goal, stay focused, you're going to accomplish it. Simple. <laughs> Simple. Damn, you, you spoke to my soul right there, man. Like, <laughs> for real. No, and like, honestly, yeah, I'm, like, all jokes aside, like, it, all these podcasts, the way they've, they've come about, and like I said, every episode, I, I take something from every guest that we've had, and it's almost like every episode that we have, it's something that I've been thinking about, and it's almost kind of like speaking to me, you know? Mm-hmm. And, I think that's great, man. I I really appreciate everything you said. And I don't think I've even told you this, but I text my buddy. I had talked to my buddy, the one who made the merch for us. um, And I told him, dude, I'm like, we need to start a company. We need to start like a media company, multimedia. Like I want to take this year Mm -hmm. to learn as much as I can, like build my skills, learn everything I can next year. Like let's launch it. Like I'm tired of doing, you know, working for you know the the big man i want to be my own boss type of shit so a lot of shit you said today man spoke to me and and i appreciate that like that's great like i think there is a purpose for everybody and everything that we meet and it's it's all coming together and 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 i you know good job booby finally (laughs) pulled your weight fuck you (laughs) (laughs) No interaction is by accident, brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No no interaction is ever by accident. You can take something from every single person mm-hmm. you ever meet, whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing. You can take something away from every single person that comes into your life. Yeah. And those are facts. You can take something away from everybody. Even if they're doing the wrong thing, what do you get out of that? Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's like, dude, so, if, so to me, if I can sit here and I can inspire you to keep fucking pushing, mm-hmm. that's a fucking win for me. You know what I'm saying? That's oh, a yeah. dub for me on my end. Because that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to keep fucking working. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit what anybody has to say, my guy. I'm going to keep working. And we gonna, and I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> I'm going to win. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give a shit what anybody says. I am the fucking GOAT. There yeah. is no one better than me around doing this shit. Right now, there's mm-hmm. nobody better than me. I don't give a shit who you are. There's nobody better than me. And I firmly believe that shit. Whether they believe it or not, I don't give a shit. Because mm-hmm. what did we say earlier? I can't control what you're going to feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If my if my confidence affects your self-esteem, that has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I love me some me, baby. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Fuck yeah. 
Coach fucking J, man. Shit. <laughs> well, I think on that note, you know, we'll wrap this episode up. Um, thanks, man. I, I, thanks for for hosting us here in in the the setup. This is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, man. For sure, brother. No, I I thank you guys for having me on. I have been uh, I've been looking forward to it for a minute, and uh, you guys are the first ones to get me on. I have. I have buddies of mine mm -hmm. um, do they do have some podcasts as well. No one locally though, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're going to San Antonio Labor Day, and uh, I got that scheduled up there. And then uh, I have a couple buddies who also want to get me on. But you guys are the first ones to be able to get me on, man. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. It's awesome. Cool, A Town exclusive right here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. No, I loved it. No, it was fun, man. Let's oh, do yeah. it up. Do it up again. All right, well, this wraps this episode. Uh, Booby, any final words? No, nah, man, it was great having you on. Like I told him, I was like, dude, I was like, we get him on and he, he, he's good. He'll, he'll talk and, and we'll hear him out. I was like, we, should, we need to get him on. But you know what? I, I, was I, think, I think it's like a family thing, dude. Like, I've been like this my whole life where I'm just like fucking... <laughs> He's like, dude, he's always like, you're fucking cocky. Like, you bring off it. No, you know, fuck like, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> no, like, no, dude. It's just like a, it's just the way it is. I don't know. My sister used to tell me too. She's like, she, she used to tell me like, you and you're, she would tell me like, you are, you're like Joey and Johnny. Like, you guys are just fucking <laughs> full of it. I, <laughs> I'd be like, I haven't seen those dudes in forever. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, man, but it's it, but it goes. But uh, again, just to wrap. You know, last my last point here is just like, dude, you c carry yourself the way you know the way you want. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. what everybody's gonna say, bro, because they're gonna say shit anyway. Yeah. Does that make sense? They're gonna hate you. They're, they're if they're gonna hate you, they're gonna hate you anyway. Yeah. Whether 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 you're like, oh my god, I can't believe they don't like me, and you start questioning yourself. Guess what? They're still gonna hate you. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So be exactly the, what what they hate. Yeah. They hate the fact that they can't phase you, bro. What is That's it? what they hate. They hate us because they ain't us. They hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> I thought it was something like well, you, you said something like anus the other day, dude. I think you said something like they hate us because we ain't us or some shit. <laughs> I was like, he oh, said dude. it. He said, <laughs> I forgot the T in there. Dude. <laughs> oh, shit. No, hell yeah, man. No, but no, nah, in all honesty, man, you just, man, you just gotta fuck everything. Fuck the world. I'm a walking erection. <laughs> Brent Fires, baby. That's going to be a t-shirt right there. You know dude. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Cool. Yeah, nah, man. I loved it, bro. Thanks, you guys. Thank you guys for having me. Um, next time, if you guys want it, let me know. I'm yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're definitely going to run this one back. There's a couple of guests that we've had where like, we, we're going to have to do it again, but, you know, we keep getting people that want to come on, and so we'll, you know, we'll do it. We'll keep doing this until the wheels fall off, right? Yep. Yeah. And I tell you what, when I start my podcast, you guys can come on mine. Hell yeah, man! When I, yeah, when I, when I get it going finally, when yeah, I, it's gonna happen. Do it. Cause I got something to say. Yeah, <laughs> and no. I need the world to hear. It. For I'm sure. Yeah. If you need help with it, man, let me know. I mean, like I said, I I'm new to this, but I, I've learned a lot, and it's it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. No, yeah, I had a blast, dude. It was awesome. It was my first time on it, on a podcast, and. Dude, the time flies. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we got to stop because I, I have like, yeah. like battery, I mean, a memory card left, but yeah. No, uh, we're good. Anyways, uh, comment, subscribe, um, give us some feedback, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. Shout out to, what's your Instagram? But before we cut it. Oh, Coach, yeah. Coach underscore J underscore IKFC. Yeah. It will soon change, but. I'll, I'll, I'll link it up there. All right. Yeah. All right, we're out. Cool. Oh, yeah. You.